Where's the remote? Found it. Turn off the lights. All right. Did you grab the drinks? Yeah, I got them. Okay, I'm making the popcorn. It's starting, come on. All right, all right, okay. I'm here, hit the button. Hi, it's Jill. Nope, she hates when I say that. Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm Gianna. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the We Watch It All podcast. Where we watch it all and give you our opinions. AKA the opinions no one ever asked for. And our neighbors probably love hearing that repeatedly. Back to back. You know what? You're getting a free podcast. You're getting the unedited True that. version. So too bad. Get over Suck it. Suck it. Really, it's it's free. You don't even have to listen. Not like we have ads in our thing, but you know, you're getting the you're getting the free version here. You're getting and you're getting it. You're getting it sometimes. Oh, I just put my finger in the um um neospore, and then I have it on my ear. Whoopsie. Mm. Let me get a napkin. Um, what was I just saying? You're getting a free something or another. Oh. Not only are you getting it for free, but you're... Well, she even went into my computer and brought up the wheel of watching. <laughs> yes, I said I was getting you ready while you were feeding the cats. Come on now. Um, I didn't think you're that. also getting it, like, sometimes, like, a day or two early, depending on when we record things. So, really, like, be grateful, you yeah. know? Be that. Yeah. Also, before we get into our, our episode stuff, I'm just going to say I'm very disappointed with myself this week in my watch time. But I had issues with my sissy this week you know sissy tmi no no you can't share her personal business okay well sissy had a tmi situation so because she's my cat it took a mental toll on me she had a medical emergency nothing that serious she's she's okay not not to be a medical emergency yeah she's okay but um but you know as somebody who has anxiety i went down a deep dive you said i couldn't say it (laughs) i'm just kidding she needed to poop. And she wasn't, and then she did, so now it's all good. Yeah, I cried and everything. I, you know. So now we're counting calories for these fatties, and she's already way over. Uh, just like her mother. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get into news this week. How much news do you have? Let me count mine. I, you know, I'm not even sure if half of my news is, like, relevant or right, but I'm going to do it anyway. I have I have six. Six. What? <laughs> Okay, Jesus. so for everyone, yeah, you but my one, my two. one is really big. I have two that are really big, not okay. big, but right, like so have, I'll do have two, like multiple you, and things. then and you'll do one every time. Mm. So who should start? Um, I'll, I'll start with one. I'll throw it out there. Okay, just looking to stop looking. I want to see if we have the same ones. I don't think we do. Okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, Deadpool movie. I don't know if we've done this. The release date? Yeah, last week. Did we? We yeah. said September sixth. Yeah. Really? Uh oh. <laughs> no, knock down one. I don't remember that. Yeah, we did. Did we also say Armor Wars was supposed to be a Disney Plus series? Uh, now it's a movie, yeah. We said that last week? Yeah. Do I black you out? <laughs> oh my god. She just doesn't listen to anything I say. Well, let me start again. All right. Next. Okay, so now that you <laughs> um, So now what do you have, like, four? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you don't have this one, Kyle Richard. No. Shared her three new tattoos. At 53, she revealed three new tattoos during the reunion. She has an ankle tattoo that has a crescent moon and four stars. Uh, she showed There was a, a picture of her showing it to Andy like during one of the breaks. And then on her wrists, she has a outline of a heart. And on the other one, she has the Roman numeral 18. And her daughter Alexis has the... Alexia has the same one on, on her as well. And apparently it's the family's lucky number do we have a lucky number should we have a lucky number yeah i know another girl that i watch on a youtuber she <laughs> she whispered it to me <laughs> i don't feel like that's my lucky number i don't really know but i just know that's a number we always use so that's why oh we always use but, but i don't know if it's no, lucky it's our lucky number i feel like 12 or 16 i don't know but anyway I don't really. Think I like we, the number fourteen. I don't think we really have a lucky number, but another girl I know uses thirteen. Their family says thirteen has a lot of significance, I guess, in their family. Like it said something about her brother's birthdays, fathers, stuff like that. So yeah, but Came we don't have that. So yeah, so that's that's my one piece. Go ahead. All right. So you should do two for everyone. Yeah, I no, have. I am. That's yeah. what I'm Okay. So Emma you just co- said that. See, something's wrong with me. Clearly, because right. if I'm, what's one thing not to remember? She hasn't last... seen her therapist in three weeks. So next yeah, time she really sees her, we'll get her. We'll have. We'll ask her that she tests or something. She keeps saying that, but 
I think we should. All right, so uh, Emma Caulfield is going to reprise her role as Dottie in Agatha's Coven of Chaos. This was confirmed by Vanity Fair. So that definitely makes me feel like Coven of Chaos is definitely going to take place in Westview again. That's mm. to me, right? Because that's where Dottie's from, so it would, you know, make sense that it would be there again. I'm very excited for this That's show. so funny because I just saw something about her, and I put it all again together that she played... In, in, um, she was in WandaVerse WandaVision. and... WandaVision. Yeah, WandaVision. Um, no, because she was talking about something about the, the multiverse or something, but Uh-oh. she was saying how she was in that. She was also very, very key in another big one, Buffy, and 90210. Yeah. I, you know, it's like you're killing Eve. It always goes back there. She was like a very big character in that one. Like she's been... She hasn't been in a lot of things, but the things she's been in are very like... Big. Yeah. Yeah. Because she was, she was very big in, um, in Buffy. She's... And you know what... Certain shows I really like because certain people, like certain shows people stay friends with and like the cast of Buffy, they're all still friends. Like yeah. all still like really close friends. But I think it has something to do with Sarah Michelle Gellar because she seems like that. She was in Cruel Intentions with that Selma Blair that's on Dancing with the Stars yeah. and they are really cl- close friends too. I think she stays very tight with the people that she acts with for some reason. But um, yeah, I can see that. All right, my next piece, Housewife. I got a little Housewife news. It's rumored that Candy Burgess is going to Maybe has gross. signed a two million dollar contract for season fifteen of Atlanta Housewives. Which sorry, Rena, she oh, I said to shut you off alarm. Um, sorry, Rena, you're not getting the two million dollars. They gave which, Candy. You know what's so funny is there was a point where like I would have never suspected Candy to be the one, um, just because she really like was she always stayed on the outskirts of. Like, trouble. Like, you know, she really... But then there was a point where she was just involved in every freaking thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Go throw that third one in. That's a small one. Yeah, this is small. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever tickets are now on sale, which we still have not gotten our tickets because with the sissy thing, we didn't even realize the trailer dropped because I was so thrown off with her and I haven't got to get the tickets to even see what's what's available left. So I have to do that. I have to go get our tickets because yeah, sadly like, we don't just buy tickets for ourselves. We gotta buy tickets for Dean as well. I feel yeah. like we could say Dean now on a first name basis. So we, we don't have to like coordinate with him. Yeah. Because he's like, oh I got this and th- oh my goodness. He's yeah, I listen. He's got a tight schedule. He has a that. very tight schedule. Seriously. Simply put, tight schedule. Seriously tight schedule. So it makes it hard to go see a movie <laughs> with him. But All right. we, somehow we always manage to pull We do. It out. We always go and see it. Usually I just tell him I'm buying the tickets. You're either showing up or you're not. I don't remember you talking about this, but Uh-oh, I'm going to mention it anyway. So, um, I'm sure you probably know, but what? Harley Quinn on HBO. It's yeah, we posted that on our Instagram story. But that is my last piece of news, so you took my last piece of news. Oh, that's it's right. We're Val- now. Valentine. But aren't you impressed that I saw that? That um, they're having the uh, very problematic Valentine special that's coming February 2023. Um, something I didn't know, though, is that uh, Kelly Cuoco yeah, does her voice. Harley I didn't know that. And I know the other girl, too. Um, Lake Bell. Yeah, she's from a couple things that I've seen. Um, she just poison ivy. In case anybody was wondering. Yeah, she. Um, but the viewers are also going to get updates in that one on Superman and Lois, uh, the Riddler, Clock King. There's not going. There's some other people I said are not going to be in there. You're not going to see a couple Kite Man. Um, there's a couple of things that aren't going to be in that one. Well, Kite Man's already supposed to be getting his own spinoff show, so I yeah. bet they're probably not going to even probably address him. Um, Obviously, I'll be covering that. So that will probably be good. So I know if you've been listening, I said I was going to do the comic books and probably post them on our Instagram story. But that so one maybe I'll like save you, the comic books But this them. one sounds like you could just watch, like, separately. Like, you don't, you didn't have, like, the, the way they they sound like they're going to do this, you yeah. don't have to have watched the other. Well, let's just say I mean, it probably this, would though. make it better it if you did. Would, because you'll be a little like, confused when you start season one and Harley and Ivy are not together and she's setting up to marry No, Kyman. no, no, no. I'm saying that they're saying you can watch this without watching those. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. No, so, I know, but I'm just saying, like, if you watch this and then you went back and watched the show, you Yeah, no, be... but I'm saying, like, I could watch this. We could watch the special, like, yeah. if, you know. And I would be okay if I jumped in on the special instead of, you know, yeah. the other one. All right, so, so uh, my next two? Yeah. Thank God I cut her list down a little. I, well, you took it off by one. I didn't um, even see that. How did I not see that originally? Was it down it's lower? All, it's the last one. No, but was it lower before? No. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see it. Um, and I looked for it, too. That's why. Shit's Creek is going to be moving to Hulu, which I personally always thought it was on Hulu. Now, I don't know if this means it's coming off of Netflix, because that's where I originally watched it when I first watched it. Love this show, by the way. I've never really gotten a chance to talk about it on here, but I love it. Uh, I mean, I mean, Eugene Levy, obviously. Murtaugh, that's Superbad that does it for everybody. 
Um, so yeah, Hulu, I really don't want to watch it with ads. So maybe I will finally put on my Christmas list the Schitt's Creek DVDs. And she goes, not getting that for you. Nope, not doing it. I didn't say it. It just pierced my lips. There's yeah. a difference. Well, okay. You know what? She didn't think I was going to get the Schitt's Creek Funko Pops, but here well, I am. Well, that's a small one, too, so do the next one, too. Yeah, okay. Uh, Shotgun Wedding, which is going to be starring J-Lo. Does she want to go by J-Lo when it's acting, or should I call her Jennifer Lopez? I don't really know. I don't know. Like, is she like J-Lo's just music, or Jennifer is Jennifer Could Lopez be. acting? Either way, you know who I'm talking about. And Josh Duhamel, uh, oh, their I movie's going to be on Prime Video on January 27th. Josh Duhamel, another soap opera star gone big. Um, Not going to lie. All my children. No, or is he General Hospital? He might have been General Hospital. Uh, Jen was popping up in a lot of different movies. I think we just announced another one. She and does we've done that. like three. She like can, She comes out of nowhere and does movies all the time. She's weird like that where I think she just does a bunch of movies and then... Because um, she did that Hustlers one and then she did that one with Leah Remedy and pop, pop. There she goes. <laughs> um, I don't know how to undo that. I think you have to lower your volume on your computer. Let's Try see. it. Let's, let's, let's do a little test here. Okay, let's try. You can see what I was just playing on my... Material Girl. Yeah. I was playing the yep, 80s. there you go. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, well, I was just curious. I mean, look, there's nothing I can do about my keyboard. Yeah. There's no mute in that. that sounds that whole... Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll check that out, because we're always trying to find a good use for our Prime video. Should I do another one while oh, you look that gonna up? Oh, she's going to be on Prime? Yeah, it's going to be on Prime video. I have another thing about Prime video. Should I do that really quick, since you're looking yeah. at that? Yeah. Um, all the t- all twenty five Bond films are currently available to stream on Prime Video in honor of sixty years of Bond, which is kind of crazy. Because I was looking for the Bond films to watch because I've never seen them. Really, I, but I've, I've seen. I was only gonna watch the new ones with Daniel Craig, but now that all twenty five are on there, I may just watch every single Bond film. You know why not? On on where on Prime? on Prime? Oh my God! I just put my finger in the cream again. Uh, what are you touching? I keep itching my ear because my bottom of my ear cracked. I know, but what? But oh, no, he I was on. I'm sorry, he was on. Ryan, ch- I keep trying to go. He was on all my children. All That's my children. Right. Yeah. He was in something I've seen him before. I don't know where I saw him. He, 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 he played was, somebody's dad or he something. Was, um, he was also in um, my brother's favorite. Um, oh my god, my Vegas. laptop's on forty five percent. Well, you don't think it'll make it? No, because it decides it wants to die here. This is the laptop that I re-brought back to life. He was in Las Vegas. Um, that was a big uh, show. He was in Transformers. Maybe no. that's where you saw it. Who are you, Josh DeMel, and where have I seen you? Um, he was in... Uh, he, he played alongside your good Love, Simon. Love, no. Simon? Yeah, and Love, Victor. He plays the guy's dad. Yeah, that's where I've seen him from. He was in Ramona and Beasley, too. Oh, maybe that's actually where I'm really probably remembering him from. That's the one with Selena Gomez, right? Love, Simon. I don't think that's where you've seen him. I've seen Love, Simon. And I've watched, I watched watched that because I wanted to watch the Love, Victor show. All right. All right. We got to move on from him. Sorry, Josh Jamel, but your time of day is shut down. Yeah, that's it. Next person. All right. Do you want to go with your next piece of news? How many more do I have? I have one, two, three. Yeah, I'll do three, one. I'll throw one out there. Four, five. I have five left. That's probably, once again, something we've discussed and I missed. Oh, I hope um, not. <laughs> Charlie Cox, Matt Murdock made his first cameo in She-Hulk as we all know, that's nothing new to anyone but um, in his yellow suit, uh, Marvel released the two new posters for Matt yeah. Murdock with the gold background uh, as Matt and then he's uh, the man without fear in his new suit with the red background, they were quite nice where do they put these posters is what I want to Twitter know. and Instagram oh, Okay. sometimes we share them on our story, not always Just one. they were nice, yeah they were good I, li- I like those posters, just simple posters I'm a simple poster girl, <laughs> if you know what the floating head posters are, they're basically the posters that you see for every movie trailer some of them I cannot stand, let me tell you the Wakanda Forever one that's kind of like you could call it the floating head, I love that because it's like the Wakandans and then they have like Namor and his people like like uh, reflected in the water. It looks great. Like that's a really great example of a nice floating head poster. But there are some. I think like Endgame is probably my least favorite one. They're just oh oh no actually, uh, Spider Man Homecoming has the worst floating head poster I've ever seen. <laughs> I could go on about that though. Okay, my next two pieces of news. Okay. Uh, Titans has released their first look at Brother Blood. Mother Mayhem and Jinx. Now let me be honest, I don't know any of these characters. Sometimes Titans bring some people that I'm like, I've never even heard of them. I know people, I've seen people online say they know who they are. I don't know who they are. The most I know about Brother Blood is that um, Klaus Michelson 
from the originals and Legacies is playing him. Oh. So that's who he is. That's Interesting. He'll be the actor for him. And I'm really, yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't actually know much about the Titans overall. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm learning as I go, but there are some characters that I already liked. Like, I had no clue about Dove and Hawk, but I really ended up liking those two characters. Yeah, I did too. Um, and now, this one was random, and I don't know how true this is. I just saw this on Twitter somewhere. Arthur's going to be hosting his own podcast on October 30th. Who's Arthur? Arthur. Arthur, the chip, the, the comic c- cartoon guy? Yeah, Arthur. His show canceled, now I guess he's getting a podcast. And he wears the headphones, but they're not on his ears. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be a cartoon, or it's gonna be. An I don't know show. what it is. That's all the information I had gotten. Was that he's got his own podcast coming out? All right. Do you want to go? I got. I got three more now. Uh, yeah, I'll do. I'll do one. All right. Go ahead. What are uh, you even looking over there? Because I can never see over your shoulder. Nothing. Uh, okay. What? <laughs> nothing. So, uh, I'm talking about BravoCon. What are you doing? It's BravoCon. That's it. <laughs> oh, crackhead. Um, yeah, BravoCon is going, it's the, uh, basically, you know, like, it's like the Comic-Con of Comic-Con, Bravo. Any con that you think yeah, of, yeah, of any, like, uh, of Bravo life. It's going to be held in New York, Jacob Javik Center. Uh, Jacob Jacka Sever. Jacob Javik Center. Javis Center. Center, whatever. Well, you know, it's just, it, that's where New York Comic Con's being held this weekend. So, and literally, that's, that, in case you're so wondering the scale. next weekend will be October 14th when they're there. How so, crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> since COVID, longer. it's been two years since they've actually been back. Um, they're going to have over 100 stars. Um, all the below, below Deckers will be there. Um, Captain Lee from Below Deck, the original. Captain Jason uh, from Mediterranean. From Mediterranean. Uh, I don't think Captain the hell's Sandy. Going on uh, I don't know. I'm having a little mouth problem. Um, Captain <laughs> Gary from Sailing. Um, well, did you hear that? I wonder if they could hear that sound in my throat. That was interesting. That? Um, there's also Here going to be too. Bravo Kids. Um, oh, the... Albie and Chris Manzo, which I, I don't think they came back last year. I don't even understand. I don't know. No, really. They what haven't been they here have for two to... years. No, the first year. The first yeah. year, I'm saying. Um, Brooks Marks, who's Salt Lake City. Uh, the son, kid. yeah. Yep. Uh, Frankie, uh, Catania, and uh, Gia Judice. Um, also, I wish the New Jersey kids. Like, what's up with the other kids? I think it's just easier, probably, because they're here. It's New York. I don't know. Yeah. But those are the kids that most people, like, think they of when they think of. They yeah. Because even, kid. like, look at this case in point. They're going to have some significant others. They're all New Jersey. It's going to be, you know, Frank Catania. It's going to be Aren't Evan Goldschneider. It's going to be, what? Aren't the men getting their own panel, too? The yeah, New they Jersey are. Men? They're going to have a significant others. Bill Aiden, um, Joe Gorga, Joe Bonino. So they're having their own thing. Um, there's also going to be something called a, a galley talk, which is going to be with Kate Cash. Kate Chastain, who was from Below Deck with Captain Lee. So she's going to do, like, she was a chief stew. So she's going to do a little something with that. Um, Candy and the gang from Candy Burgess, uh, her show where they open the restaurant, they're going to be there along with some legacy housewives, Caroline Manzo and Cynthia Bailey. They're going to do something separate, I guess. Married to Medicine, Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles, Project Runway, Christian Seriano and Eileen Welthroff. I don't know who she is, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't even recognize her picture. Shaza Sunset will be there, Southern Charm, uh, Summer House and the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Beverly Hills. Dubai, Miami, Potomac, Salt Lake City, and last but never least, Vanderpump Rules will be there. No Tickets. New York girls? No, it did not say New York. Well, you, but well I'm sure New York it might is be. showing up because I also they heard must that be, but they were not listed in the, in the an thing. An East versus West panel, and Ramona's representing most of They have of to be there, though. I, I didn't see their name unless I missed it. Well, Ramona's the only New York Because I also didn't. Oh, and Luann and Sonia are going to be there, so yeah, I don't I know. Maybe they're in New Jersey, so these might be something separate they're doing. But um, tickets. Are ridiculous. They start at like one hundred and seventy dollars, and they go all the way up to one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. So, my God! So yeah, we're not going. <laughs> insane. No, we're not going. No, that's insane. That's yeah. ridiculous. So there you have it. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. I mean, considering you know, we've said we live in the Northeast. We could just drive around and hopefully bump into a yeah, couple that's instead. My you know, really, you could do a whole East Coast thing and try to bump into one. Um, all right. Are we ready for my next two pieces? Yes. Actually, I might just do all three of them together because two are Marvel news. Wait, is this it? Am I done? Are you, you don't have I'm any done, more news? Yeah. That's oh, I okay. Well, then it doesn't mean, even matter. All right. So the first trailer for the new Super Mario Brothers movie is officially out. It was very cute. 
It is very cute. Um, I think Jack Black as Bowser is a great example of voice acting. I think Chris Pratt as Mario is a horrible example of voice acting. And um, listen, people got upset with the Sonic movie and how Sonic looked. And guess what? They changed it. So I think there's still time to have so an, an actual voice actor come and redo Chris Pratt's part. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I don't. It doesn't sound... That doesn't sound like Mario to me, okay? He just sounds like he's like goofy. Somebody gave an example of who he sounded like, and now I can't remember what they said. And it was like, I was like, yeah, that's spot on. But I don't know. It just sounds like I'm listening to Chris Pratt talk, quite frankly. And I don't know. Like, when you heard Jack Black do Bowser, you could hear a little bit of Jack Black in there, but you could tell that he was doing a voice. Like, yeah. Chris Pratt w walked in that studio and went, it's me, Mario. Uh. Pull it together, Chris Pratt. I'm serious. Um, yeah. But, I mean, obviously I think this is going to be in theaters. So, if we still end up having those free cine passes, we may hold out to that. Or go, like, on a discount Tuesday type yeah. of thing. Because it does look cute. Um, and a Dean, bringing him up again, uh, he indoctrinated us with Mario growing up entirely. That's all he would play. Because she would watch him when I was at school when he was little. And three years old, he was beating all the Mario games. So I'd come home and all the worlds would be unlocked in every game. Mm -hmm. There would be nothing left for me to do on my Wii. <sighs> yeah, so, you know, it kind of holds a special place for us so we feel like we should go see it. Now, two uh, bits of news on the Avengers movies that are coming out. Uh, Destin Daniel Creighton, who directed Shang-Chi, is now officially confirmed to be directing Avengers The Kang Dynasty, and I think that would be really good because I really love Shang-Chi. I mean, the, the scene that they had um, with his dad and his mom, you know, in the very beginning, that fight scene, and then they mirrored it at the end with him and his dad. I love that. that was so, I, I love when they do little callbacks and things like that, and I thought that was really good. So I think he'll do really good with this. And one piece of news I'm not too happy with. Michael Waldron, who wrote Loki and Multiverse Madness, he's going to write for Avengers Secret Wars. I'm going to be honest, he's probably not my favorite writer for Marvel content. I think I've said Loki is not at my highest of all the Phase 4 content, sadly. Um, and Multiverse of Madness, I'm just always going to love because it's Wanda. But, you know. I don't know. Maybe he'll pull together. <laughs> that's, that's my hope, but uh, that's my little bit of... Marvel news. Are we ready to spin that wheel? Sure am. What are you doing over there? Nothing. Just See, you're doing something over there, and you're going to come back next week, and you're <laughs> going to tell me that Michael Waldron's writing the Secret Wars, <laughs> and not realize. Is it Armor Wars? Secret War? Avengers Secret Wars. Oh. And then there's, yeah, there is Armor Wars, too, but okay. he's not doing Don't that. Let me confuse. All right, let's spin this wheel. Let's see if the volume would play this week. Here we go. The wheel, wheel, wheel of watching. Oh, crap. Wait, I spun it and I didn't tell you guys what's on it. Hold on. Sorry. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me bring it in close because I can't see. Go. Our favorite Nickelodeon show. Our favorite Supernatural show. Mm -hmm. A show I want my co-host to watch. A movie that I'd give five stars. Best prequel movie that was an afterthought. Um, a movie just for a relaxing, you know, chill night. Um, what the hell was that sound? Was that sissy? Yeah. Oh. Best unexpected duo slash trio. This is back on the wheel. These guys here. Um, I'll watch anything that this actor slash actress is in. Movie family that I would want to join. Oh, no, wait. Maybe, oh, actually, sorry. It was supposed to be show family, but I accidentally copied the movie family one in here, too. I copied them both on the wheel. My bad. Show family you want to join. We already did movie family. And your least favorite Netflix original. All right. Are we ready? Let's spin the wheel for real now. That was my bad. Maybe it will make the sound for real. All right, here you go. Ready? Go. Do it. The wheel, wheel, wheel of watching. Why does it do that? Yeah, I don't know. We might have to buy a new wheel. This is free. Okay, well, you know. I will watch this actor slash actress in anything. Do you have an answer for this? I'll watch actor do anything. Oh, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, what? Yeah, of course. Okay, go ahead. Wait, I think we did this one, don't we? Or no. I feel like we did because no, I feel we did. Like I watched the, I watched the show for this actress or actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Do you want to go first? Sure. Who did you pick? Channing Tatum. Yeah, I'll pretty much watch him do anything. 
I'd watch him fold laundry, wash dishes. I picked... Pick up dog poop. I don't really care. Well, you can. That movie, Dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to. I, I have a couple it, it, movies That one's free on, on Prime Video. And we want to watch The Lost City because yeah, that that's got Sandra too. Bullock in it. So, yeah. come on. That's a win-win. And Brad Pitt. Oh, Brad Pitt's in that one, too? Yeah. I thought there was the other guy. Harry Potter was in there. I didn't know Brad Pitt was Harry in that one. Harry Potter? No. Harry Potter's in that movie, too. Is he? Well, I don't know. I don't pay attention to him. I just know Brad Pitt's in there, too. Um. Okay. My pick was Selena Gomez. Yeah, she's a good one. Because I really will. Since Wizards... I, I should have not been 14 trying to watch the movie Spring Breakers, but I was. No, I wasn't 14. I think I was younger than that. When did Spring Breakers come out? You were probably younger than that. I was... Okay, let's just say I was not the age that somebody should be watching the movie Spring Breakers. I just spelled Spring Breakers wrong. Okay, and... Okay, so maybe I need to learn how to spell. <laughs> Hold on. 2012. Yeah, I was... 12. 12. No, I might have been younger depending on the month it came out. 12, probably. No, I was 12, yeah. Yeah, I was I was 12 trying to watch this movie that I definitely should have been watching. Oh, Thank God Selena Gomez got, got left early and cried on the bus. Because I basically wasn't even... I mean, not that it she wasn't bad, that. but it, after that I was like, oh, I don't need to watch it. Selena Gomez is not in it anymore. And there's a ton of other movies, too, that she was in that I I know I was going to, like, watch, but I didn't end up watching. There's that movie that she's in with Paul Rudd. I actually might have watched that one. I can't remember. And then there's that one, too. I can't believe I still haven't watched this one. The one with Nat Wolf. You remember that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. I never, I still, I just think those movies were, like, I don't know if you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like they were indie films. So I, you know, yeah, yeah, I if they, they weren't were. on a streaming service, I didn't get to really watch them. And that one, I'm surprised that that one I haven't watched because... I have not talked about this, but I'm a huge Naked Brothers Band fan, so come on. The fact that I haven't seen that. But, I mean, listen, Only Murders in the Building, I remember on Disney's Investor's Day, when they had announced it, you could watch it, and they posted that Only Murders was coming, but they didn't show the preview, because it was all, that was only for investors. I remember seeing that being like, oh no, this sounds scary, this show. Like, I probably would have not I'll watched... I was it was going to be, like, not... Like, something yeah. creepy. But I was like, you know what? I'll have to try it for Selena Gomez. And honestly, if only Murders in the Building existed and Selena wasn't in it, I probably wouldn't have watched it, if I'm being honest. No? I don't know. It depends. I think it was a good It would show. depend... No, no, no. It's a good show, but I'm just you saying... You mean it would depend who it was? Yeah, it depend who was playing Selena. Because I just think Selena and, 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 and them work so well together that, you know, I don't know if somebody else could duplicate... The chemistry they yeah, they but have the thing is now you will never know because you watched her do it, so it's like yeah. All right, well that's all I had to say. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's let's get on to our solo watches now. I gotta give a preface in here. I'm embarrassed. I am so embarrassed. So okay, I did finish Kung Fu, and I watched season two episode one. That's all I watched for, and I watched Abbott, and that's all I watched this week. Um, because most of the time, I didn't want to start a show up. I, w- I was just watching on my phone so that if I heard Sissy go, I could go with her. Oh, I'm like, wait, what the hell's going yeah. on? Yeah, and I was just so distraught. And I was also having hip pain. So <laughs> I had to keep, you know, I'd have to sit with my back to the TV. So that wasn't going to work. So I just figured, you know what, I'm going to watch a YouTube video or a TikTok on my phone. So that's kind of what I ended up doing. So I only have two shows to talk about this week and i'm kind of embarrassed but yeah i didn't even get to start american auto i didn't even finish kung fu so let me tell you next week don't watch anything because i'm coming for you oh yeah i don't think that's gonna be but i gotta i'm gonna finish no listen what this is serious now okay because i didn't realize how serious this was about this damn kung fu Uh uh-huh season three i'm so i haven't watched a cw show since we had hulu live Right? Yeah. And now that we don't have it, I didn't realize that you can't watch CW shows without Hulu Live. So I have to watch it on the crappy CW app now. So I have to watch it in a certain amount of time before they remove it from the CW app now. So now I have to finish season two so I can watch episode season three, episode one, and not lose it. Also, I didn't realize, but um, Carrie Martin, uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, she's going to be on the show too. Doing what? I don't know who she is, but she. I just heard, I followed Kung Fu on Instagram and I saw somebody post that. She's on the show. Another win. What a good cast they have now. Um, yeah. So I have to. I have to finish Kung Fu, and 
I'm determined. I want to watch a funny show. So I have one, two, three. <laughs> oh my god, she's just scrolling through. Four. Oh my god. Four. Okay, so you do two. <laughs> I'll do one. You do two. The problem is, I have Dancing with the Stars three episodes, and well, real, I watched real, part of the... real Girlfriends of Paris about four episodes or five. Well, I did watch that that some of the second and third Dancing with the Stars with you, so. Sure. I could throw a little bit on here and there. <laughs> if you want. It's not a lot. I've condensed it. It's Did A-A-B. I put stuff behind this ear, too? <laughs> oh, Jesus. These oh, my God. Ears. All right, so who wants to go first? Uh, I could, uh, I'll start. I don't care. Okay. That's really sad. I'm looking over at her notes. Um, so my, I would I should have wrote more, so, but you well, did write you watch so much that you know I really shouldn't. I kind yeah, of oh, thought like I'm it's gonna, like I knew. I'm gonna preface it with I worked a double, so I had a little bit of downtime. So yeah, she was at work doing a double while I was at home crying <laughs> over my cat not being able to go to the bathroom. Like I had to give up one of the doubles. So anyway, uh, I watched Southern Charm. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Tell us uh, what you watched. Southern Charm, Kardashians. Uh, Real Girlfriends of Paris got finally got that one done. Um, I also watched Dollface, but I'm gonna discuss that. Yeah, save I'll that for next. No, week, well, please. I'm not gonna discuss it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say why. Um, and also Dancing with the Stars episode one, two, and three I caught up. Um, and oh, we watched part of it live too. Yeah, that was interesting. And I think was that it. Yeah, I think that was it. So oh, can I please be it? Yeah, <laughs> you show well, no, up. I mean, I watched other things, like, but I'm not going to report on them. You know, obviously, I watched also, you know, my Days of Our Lives. Yeah, my Mediterranean, below deck Mediterranean. Um, like I said, I did watch Dollface, but I'm not going to cover Dollface. I'll tell you why. So, it's a good show. I recommend it. It's cute. It's why? funny. Why is the air purifier kicking up? Who stunk up the joint? What? I didn't do anything. Look at. Oh my god, the air quality's dropping in here. Maybe it's the maybe it's the candle, all of a sudden it caught wind of it. It's on the other side of the It's flickering between eighty four and eighty five. What the hell? Eighty five must be where it's good. Eighty four is where it's not. Okay, well anyway. So <laughs> Well, we're just gonna <laughs> shut down the air quality then. How about that one? It's getting um, hard to breathe. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, Dollface face so. is good, but I you know what, I just I don't want to cover it because no, it's not that. It's just that it's it's one of those shows where you just kind of like just go watch it. It's cute. It's it's a cute show, but it's just well, maybe once you're finished with it entirely, yeah, just I let can us give like a, a, yeah, I can do like a synopsis of it, but I don't want to do a weekly breakdown of it. I've come to the conclusion, so I said I'm not doing it. But I do recommend to go watch it. You put up like a wall over there with that toilet paper with that paper towel. <laughs> I mean, I can see the candles, all right, though. Yeah. So. Um, so we'll start with Southern Charm, which I was pleasantly surprised. It was the reunion. You know, reunions are the best because that's when people go ber- berserk. And I knew they were going to have... Sometimes the first ones are good, though. What do you mean? Like, like the, the first, first ones, ones, depending on how much drama they had in a season, like the first one could be like... <sighs> it wasn't it, it wasn't bad. It didn't really touch on much. So basically what I'm going to say about this is... And that's what I'm saying. It'll kind of go quick. So there were okay. th- three girls... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Three guys to seven girls on this show. So... Austin Crawl said the best thing. They're outnumbered. They pray to God. They're going to be okay. Because, um, you know, the girls could all tag team up on them. However, that's not going to happen. So the panel was Austin, Olivia, his girlfriend, at the time of the show. We're not, I, I can't say speak on it yet. Um, Madison, at, at Austin's ex-girl, other ex-girlfriend before Olivia. Uh, Leva, she owns a restaurant, a bunch of restaurants. Um, and she's the only brunette in this group, which is weird because everybody else is blonde. Um, it's like California over there in, in Charleston. I don't know. Um, Craig, who does the sew down under pillars, pillows. I love that every time you bring up Craig, we have to mention his pillows. Cause like we would well own known. them and we're sponsored by him. But No, because they they're, they're very well known. And his ex-girlfriend, Naomi. Actually, Craig, can you make a butt pillow and send it? I need another I one. probably would. Um, Shep and his ex-girlfriend, Taylor. Catherine, who is a series regular from the way back, but she wasn't really in it as much this season. Um, and new girl, Vanita. So it kind of starts off with Andy basically saying that majority of these people in this group have all had relationships with one another in some way, shape, or form. Um, and then Madison, who is the one that was allegedly involved with A-Rod, uh, pipes up and starts making comments about Austin's new girlfriend. 
it's just it, it was a crap show they went into how Shep and Taylor aren't together and how he can't commit so therefore you know um she's just another number in his list of whores my, her words not mine um <laughs> and everyone said to her like did you think you were going to be the one to change him and I think she sadly did but it wasn't going to happen um Catherine, who's one of the originals, like I said, she is still fighting over her kids with Thomas. Thomas, I can't remember his last name right now, is um, a very prominent like political figure there, and she's still taking him to court. Um, she is not as relevant as she wants to be on the show anymore because I think she's just got too much going on. Um, the fans were commenting on how Olivia is a clone of Madison, and but she's a me- but Madison is meaner, and apparently, oh, what are we doing? We're taking a window check. Oh my on. god! What? Oh my god! What? The kid just threw. They have Halloween costumes. Hold on. Let me apparently, check. it's Halloween in our town, and we didn't know it. No, 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 no! Across the street, the little girl had her Halloween costume, like a bag. It's a witch, in case you're wondering. Listen, I say I don't got good vision, but I can see that. <laughs> She took the bag and smacked her mom upside the head with it, and then the mom took, grabbed the bag and threw it back at her. Oh, well, there, there, there you go. Problem solved, everyone. That was so worth it getting up to go see. I was wondering what the screaming was going on. Cl- clearly, they were wailing on each other with their Halloween. Oh, dear Jesus. Don't come trick-or-treating at my door. Are we done? Because <laughs> you broke the flow of the Southern Charm, so. Uh, you didn't want to know that... That kid just threw, slapped her mother upside the head with her Halloween costume and the mom grabbed it back and threw it at her. Sure, but you get mad when I start going, I need lunch. So, you know. That is true. That is true. So, basically, the breakdown is this. Benita and Madison are not friends now. Madison and Leva are not friends now. Shep and Taylor are no longer together. Taylor hates him. Austin and Olivia are no longer together, but should be. Olivia and should Madison be. don't. Yeah, well, yeah, because they they make a good couple, and they're oh. they're not together for a stupid reason. Olivia and Madison don't talk, and they hate each other. Leva and Craig aren't talking and hate each other. Austin and Madison don't talk and hate each other. Madison and Olivia don't talk. Madison and Vanita don't talk. Madison and Taylor don't talk. They all think she's mean. Catherine and Naomi don't talk. Catherine and Vanita don't talk. Leva pretty much doesn't talk to anybody. So basically, it was like, who could you get to interact with each other? Because Who's nobody talks. Who's going to film with each other next season? Nobody. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. This was only part one, and half of them aren't speaking. So it's going to be very interesting for part two. So that basically was Southern Charm. It's uh, Outfit-wise, I want to say they all looked great. Um, it was not like a real housewife of Beverly Hills. These, girls, these are going girls. They know how to dress. They all looked really good. Oh. Um, Speaking of Beverly Hills, we should let you guys know, especially because I feel like Southern Charm probably watches Beverly Hills. We're going to do a bonus episode for Beverly Hills. It's going to come out on Wednesday. We typically don't post Beverly Hills stuff on Wednesday, so we just wanted to let you know um, where we're going to talk about uh, our thoughts on the overall season and reunion outfits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just felt like we should do that. Sorry. Off you go. Continue. No, I'm done. That was it. Yeah, but you had two shows. Oh, I'm going to do two. And, and... Yeah, because I oh, only two have two. two. Yeah. So, you right, have so then the Kardashians would be next. So, the Kardashians, um, season two, episode three, they're on Hulu now for anybody that's looking for them. Um, they come on on Thursdays. So, typically, I, well, they're on, they're on there on Thursday. I can see them. Um, so, it starts with Chloe going to Palm Springs with her mom, Chris Kardashian. And Chris is experiencing um, a lot of pain in her hip. I love Chris because she's a freaking cuckoo bird and will try anything. <laughs> Ow, and- I just snorted it. Came out my ear. I wow. think Chris is seventy. Really? Can you Google that for me? I yeah, think she is. Sure. She looks great. Don't get me wrong. Either sixty or seventy. It's one of them. I'm not sure. I thought I saw seventy somewhere, but she is pretty impressive. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. I knew she was in her sixties, creeping up there. So I. <sighs> well, no, I'm just saying. I knew she, she was up there. Out there. Yeah. So she's sixty-six. Um, she's having a lot of hip pain. She's. So her and Chloe are on their way to Palm Springs and they're going to a dispensary to get some gummies to see if this will help with her mother's hip pain. Well, this is Chris's idea, not Chloe's. Um, so Chris ends up spending, let me just say this, $700 in gummies. I was going to say 500 $700 in gummies. She got gummies yeah, for but... her hip and gummies for sleep. Um, you can do that, though. Think about just... CBD on its own. A little bottle of CBD is 30 bucks. Oh, no. I know. Our CBD so. is, you know. And I think she got, like, CBD and a THD and then just CBD 
Like ABC. She, she got like a bunch of stuff. So she did get a lot for her seven. Don't get me wrong. Um, and then Chloe and her decide to split one because she asked Chloe, like, how should I do this? And she's like, maybe just start with a half a one. And she's like, well, you, will you split it with me? So Chloe's like, okay, because Chloe went, it was Chloe, Kit, Chris, and Corey, Chris's boyfriend, that went to Palm Spring together. And she asked if she could th- 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 be the third wheel. Ugh. Because she's like, you know, just a little still bummed about the whole Tristan thing and stuff. Um, it's a little out of order, to be I, honest wait, with you. Yes, she doesn't so have her baby at this I point I don't yet. know if she had her baby. They showed last week her having the baby, but I don't know if she had the baby here at this point. Because I find it hard to believe that she would leave the newborn. The newborn. Yeah, so I have a feeling she didn't, and I have a feeling that, that True was maybe with the dad, or I'm not sure. Because True's not with her, so I don't understand. That's the only thing I understand. Um... They decide to go get tacos, which seems to be Chris's go-getting thing. When she was in Palm Springs last week with, with what's her name, Courtney, she started, she had tacos there too. So I, I don't know. Um, she They get to the place though, and Chris says, I'm not feeling the gummy at all. It's just, it's not doing anything for me. And, and Chloe's like, well, I'm, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll kick in or maybe you should have took more. Oh, who knows? Well, all of a sudden they order their food. And Chris says, I'll have the same thing Chloe had. And then Chloe's like, I thought you wanted tacos. She's like, oh, yeah, no, I have a beef taco and I'll have a um, an, uh, an enchilada. And then all of a sudden Chloe realizes it must be kicking in because mm-hmm. she's hungry and, like, she's getting a lot of food. And then all of a sudden she goes off the deep end and starts, like, giggling and just off the chain. And she says, I think my gummy kicked in. But they were hilarious um, and then you have Kylie who I look, I usually love Kylie just because, you know, I'm like impressed with how she built this business, but she's shooting her lip oils and this is her first time shooting since having a baby. And, you know, she's just worried cause she forgot how to pose since having a baby. I'm sorry. You, you forgot take any Instagram pictures. You before, forgot how to pose this? for your campaigns since having a baby. Whatever. These are your, these are your problems that you're worried about. Get, get a grip girl, get a grip, go back home then really and then you have courtney who also is doing a photo shoot for the cover of bustle it's a digital magazine um and she actually she's talking about all the hormones that she pumped in her body with the ivf because now they're just trying wait who courtney Courtney? yeah she had ivf she's having ivf ivf with travis because she's up there she's not young anymore so she's having trouble having kids and stuff so they want I didn't to have even a, know she was trying to have a kid with him. Yeah, they're trying to have a baby. Even before they were married. Well, they're not they're, they're I'm sorry, they're not married as of yet in the show. So they're still they were trying before that even. Um she said that all the hormones that she's been pumping in her body make her look thicker and bigger and people just keep saying that she's pregnant and she's like, Wow, oh, somebody's a real cackler. She's like somebody. All right. So um, so now that we're done being nosy Nellies. Yeah. So um, Courtney says, you know, she wishes she was pregnant, but she's not yet. And that she loves her body now than, she, than before when she was like super thin. And she was super thin. She said she was um, 95 pounds. Um, and when she, she said when she was that thin, um, she tells people when I'm that thin, that means I'm not happy. Okay. Oh. What the, like, first of all, what the hell is going on? Who's uh, over there moaning uh, and groaning? And that's they're, Cooper. And they're, they're back out in the hallway. Do you want to pause it? Let me go check. Yeah, go, 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 go. Okay, now we're done being nosy. Yeah. Because I think they left. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully they are. So then we go off to Kim, who is in Milan for the Prada show. Um, the one that she was supposed to be leaving for last week? Yeah, she did. She left for it. <laughs> last week, she she left and she got there. Um, so they're, they're oh. there in Milan, and... I just, she was talking about how there is a ton of Prada clothes in her hotel room. Like waiting for it? Yeah. And there was racks and racks of clothes, when I tell you, in that Prada, in that room, just Prada clothes. And they want her to wear Prada the whole time she's there because that's the show she's going to, obviously. But like, I wonder, like, do they pay you to wear their clothes? Like, I would think, yes. Like, I don't think she's keeping them, but I think like, if you're going to wear the clothes, what are you? And I'm coming all the way over there. I'm assuming she's getting paid to wear those clothes yeah, and be well, seen out there and photographed in it. I think, yeah, for the most part, like, like here's the thing. Well, I know last week you said she flew Air Kim or whatever. But if she wasn't going to pay for her own flight, like, if it was, like, let's just say, like, an influencer, they may pay for their flight and in rec- in return you wear their clothes and you get to basically wear their clothes. Is Your your benefit is you get to go out, wear these clothes, and get to go to the fashion show and, and, and 
payment for them. You have to. I'm sure they pay them a little bit too, but I have a feeling she got paid. Well, well obviously, probably because, because also you don't have to pack clothes now if they're giving you clothes. Yeah, well, she still had clothes. Come on, there with your little carry on. Well, yeah, yeah. she still had clothes, but um, she goes to a restaurant to eat, and this was like, I'm like, how do you not know what this is? She's at, it's an Italian restaurant. She's with her like team, who are basically her friends, like her hair, makeup, and her assistant, whatever, and all. And her man, I think her manager is the one other girl there, but like she asked them what tortellini is. Do you know what tortellini is? Is it the one that's like it's like folded in half, and then it's like a. It looks like a circle, but it's like they meet at the top. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really like connect. It just yeah. like me. Yeah. I, I can't believe she didn't know what tortellini is. I mean, you've been to Mal- you've definitely been to Italy multiple times. You've been. I just was surprised at that. Like she, I heard her ask them like, "What's tortellini?" And like they told her, and I was like, "You should be embarrassed." First of all, they asked that in Italy. I would have asked secretly, tipped to a friend, and been like, "What's tortellini?" Or I just would have forfeited it, because yeah, no. Um, she takes Kendall food because Kendall still can't come out because she's got the red hair and no one can see her with this red hair for the Prada show, which I still don't have any idea what this red hair had to do with her being in. And I know that she dyed it for the Prada show, but like it didn't seem to make any difference. Cause I didn't see anybody else with this red hair and I didn't see any significance with having the red hair because she had a blue shirt on a blue jacket and this like see-through skirt that didn't, it actually, to me, clashed with what she was wearing. I don't know. It didn't... I just bet she got paid to dye that hair, though. Oh, I'm sure she did. There's no way she's going to do that for free. Um, and then she goes to, like, show... after, like, the show, they sneak her out the back. And, um, she... oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. This is before the show. She decides to go shopping in Milan for Pete. So she was, like, getting stuff for her daughter, North, and then for then she picks up these hats for Pete. But it's, like, it's the way they shop. It's a rich person's way of shopping. Like where I try to do it when I'm in the food store so I can feel special because I justify it. It's food. But like they're just like, I'll take this. Uh, I think I like that. I'll take this. That's not what you did and last time you were no... at the food store. You actually wrote down the prices. And yeah, that's was different because we were going. that's different now. I'm Yeah, but I used to do that. I used to just buy it. But I'm like, she just pulls the stuff off the shelf, doesn't look at a price. She just asks the other guy, do you think this is nice? Do you think Pete would like this? And she puts it off. It's like funny. I'm just like, okay, there you go. I don't know, but, um, so she goes to the show, she ends up having to sneak out the back of the show, and she just ends, she goes home, and then, it was a very weird episode, because it's just very short, it was just, like, basically Chloe and Chris in Palm Springs, and then Kendall and, um, Kim in, in, in Milan, that was, like, the major thing, and then they sprinkled in, like, a drop of Courtney and a drop of Kylie, which was, like, not even worth putting in there, but, um, it does end with Chris realizing that she's going to probably have to have hip, hip surgery, hip replacement surgery. And that's like the coming attractions. They show her going to the doctor and him telling her, basically, you've lost the cartilage. And once you do that, you have to have hip replacement or you're going to be in pain and stuff. God. So, yeah. And all, you know, all Chris keeps thinking is there's no way momager can be down for that length of time. Just not going to happen. So They'll have her like in a rollable gurney and they're, she's like this way. Yeah. It's just, just rolling yeah, around. It'll definitely be interesting. But all right. You're next. All right, so we'll do Abbott first. Um, listen, once again, this show, like, I don't know, every week I feel like I'm going to come back and be like, this show was so funny again. It was so was good. Was it not? No, it oh, was. Oh, the way you were saying No, that, I'm like... saying, I just think that's my review every week. I'm going to come back and say that it was just as good as last week. Um, I'm not going to lie, this time I laughed so hard I choked a little bit. But oh. that is this kind of show, like, where you laugh, you start laughing, you're like, oh, oh, oh God, like, you know, you're like, you, like, cough. Is it as choke. funny as, remember when you used to listen to me back in the old house when I would watch Big Bang, and you'd be like, what the hell's going on in there? And you're like, and ah. I was, I was, like, cackling at, like, Sometimes, yeah. Like, I'd say at least once, I probably would do that at least once in an episode. I think... Yeah, I would really cackle I, it like, Big Bang. Let they me, were funny. I, I mean, do I think you would find it funny? You have like a thing against workplace comedies. I don't know why, but you do, and they're like my favorite. And yet, ever. I'm trying to write one eventually. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Parks and Rec has always been my favorite, but this one very much is creep filling up to beat out any sitcom. And on its second season only, that's big to say, in my opinion. It's just everybody's so good. That's the thing about this show. <laughs> Um, so for this, the main focus of this episode is the story Samurais, which was a group that Jacob used to be a part of, is going to come and perform to the school, and they ask him if he's going to, if Are he... Are Samurais? Like real Samurais that do like a No, they're like people that just dress up. It's like an improv group. Like, they'll be like, we need, give us a person, and then they'll like... So they got nothing to do with Samurais? No. Nothing at all. <laughs> and... 
they ask him if they'll join for the second half of it. Um, but then he kind of gets conflicted, you know, to join when Janine tells him that it's corny. Originally, she comes to him and he's Janine like... Janine sounds like my character. What? Janine sounds like my kind of character. Oh. Uh, I'm like, what? I thought you said my character. And I'm like, what do you mean my character? Yeah, like my kind of character. Oh. Um, she originally, though, lies to him and tells him that he shouldn't do it because she doesn't want... She's like, you don't want to upstage this new group, you know, because they're so new and, you know, you still have to approve. And then Ava ends up tricking him into doing it because, um, you know, she... She's like, I'm going to live stream it. I'm going to get more followers from this. She's like, she comes out of nowhere and she called me up. She's like, I got Pop-Tarts to sponsor my TikTok live. He has to perform now. I'm like, did she really? I don't know. I don't know. She always, she always throws those like little things out. And you're just like, I'm sorry. What? And like, you know, cause she's like, you're, you're, she's a principal of school. Good you're not her. expecting her to come for, to come out with like saying that. And then that's when Janine finally says, listen, this is corny. You don't want to do this. And he kind of comes to the conclusion that, you know what? It's okay because, you know, being corny is who he is. And as long as he's going to make the kids of the school laugh, then it's fine in his, in, in like his eyes. And also throughout the whole episode, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't ship Janine and Gregory, get on board. They basically flirted the whole episode pretty much she just walked over to her room to say hi hmm. weird <laughs> <'Cause I'm gonna laughs> say, she says <laughs> um and then i've been talking about this that melissa got i think i said she got 10 extra students no no no. she's teaching a third and a second grade class at the same exact time crazy because yeah, that's two different like yeah well i think she said criterias. last year she was a second grade so it's like weird because now her People that she was just teaching second grade last year is now her third grade class. Um, and, you know, you see her throughout the episode trying to teach them. She has, like, a line down the classroom, and she finds out all the kids are switching. And by the end of the episode, she ends up giving up and deciding that she's going to get an aide. Um, and her aide comes in, oh, my God, like, a whole, like, song number. And Melissa's just, like, this, like, tough, like, she doesn't need any help. Very much of, like, a, you Do know, all the kids a like tri-state the area. Better? What? Do all the kids like the aid better? We haven't gotten to her that yet. They just introduced the new aid. Uh, so she'll be next week. But like the... But does she look like the type that's going to upstage her or something? Is that what you think is going to happen here? No, I don't know. But I'm just saying like their dynamics going to be very interesting because yeah. the aid has very like high strong where Melissa's just very like, you know, like yeah. a very much of like a New York, Philadelphia, New Jersey kind of person where they have that like, you know, classic like, you know, when you think of those people. With Get the, it done. The thick accent. Yeah. They don't need any help. Yeah. So this girl is just like very like... Hi, let's Happy go. Let's yes, do yes. it. She came Where's in like kids? with let's a radio and she's like yeah. singing and everything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think their dynamic though is going to be like really funny because she almost reminds me of like Jeannie where they believe that it's all going to be good and perfect and everything's going to be great kind of uh-huh. type of energy. And I think it's going to be good. I think next week they said though, well, I haven't seen a promo, but I did see promo pictures and it looks like they're going to come out of the school and they're going to go to Melissa's house for like a cooking lesson, which is always interesting when you're watching these workplace shows and they're not in the food in like the superstore or in the well parks and rec is a little bit different because they didn't always stay in the like building but like brooklyn 99 even when they would take them to their houses it's always such like a big thing i feel like in my eyes when they go you know out okay now you can continue before i do my last show of kung fu <laughs> <laughs> um all right well d- um dancing with the stars it's a lot yeah it's a lot. Maybe I'll do. Dancing I didn't with see the, the first st- episode. But I didn't Maybe see I'll do Dancing with Stars and let you do Kung Fu, and then I'll do Girlfriends, just to break well, it. Well, we'll see. Yeah, sure. Well, you know what? I have I have Kung Fu, and I did take note of season two, episode one, so I can do season one, and then I could do season two after. Well, it's up to you. Don't feel pressured. I thought you were in, you were going to save that. Or no, something. I watched episode one of season two, so I can let you guys yeah. know what's going to happen in season two. So Dancing with the Stars. I'm so glad it's at Disney right now. Uh, I think they're doing a great job with it. They're very natural. Tyra Banks. I don't always like her clothes. I don't always like her hair, but I like her. So I just... And she makes a lot of mistakes, and I like it, because she will, like... She'll say something, and then... She, yeah, like, and then watch, they'll Yeah, and then they'll be like, the wait, judges. sorry, I forgot something. Yeah. Like she totally didn't have Len give his thing, and then she's like, wait, come back, let's... Like, it's live. There's nothing you can do about yeah. it. But she goes with it so good that it's like... 
you know, it's just very, you feel like you're sitting with your friend who's like doing a game with you or something. Like, it's just, she does it very she's well. She's not taking it too, like, serious. Yeah. Like, she's serious, but she's not being yeah, like, like, she takes the competition quite like, oh, serious, but like everything else, it's like, look, let's relax. It's nothing crazy. But, um, and even her answers to people are just like very nonchalant. Like, they're, you know, but um, more realistic. Yeah. Well, you know what, too? She can kind of be this way because, listen, maybe, you know, Disney Plus does say, okay, we have you booked in for two hours, but they don't have to worry about running over into somebody else's time slot because there's nobody you're running over to on Disney Plus. Yeah. Like, it's just airing by itself. There's yeah. nobody. So I know we went over this, but the celebrity dancers are Jordan Sparks. People should know her from American Idol. Uh, we know her from Big Time Rush. Um, <laughs> Sam Chan Bien, the weatherman for New York. Heidi Milo. Um <laughs> Wait, hold on. Charlie DiMillo. No, hold on. I know how to say it. Charlie DiMillo. DiMillo, whatever. <laughs> um, Mom and daughter are dancing from the DiMillo show. Um, Jesse James Decker, she's a country singer and also married to a, a football player. Uh, Daniel Durant, who was on um, Switch to Birth. He is an actual deaf, a- deaf actor. Um, and he was in the movie Coda that you were saying. Yeah. Um, Teresa Judice, New York housewife. Jersey New- housewife. Oops, New Jersey housewife. Wayne Brady, actor. Everybody knows Wayne Brady. Cheryl Ladd, she was one of the original, not, actually I shouldn't say, she was not one of the original Charlie's Angels. She came on when Farrah Fawcett left as her cousin or something. Um, or sister, I forget what it was. Vinny Guadalino. Guadalino. Get crazy. Get yeah, out. Vinny from New Jersey, uh, Jersey, Jersey Shore, Shore. Um, and Shang- Shangela, who is the first drag um, personality queen? that, yeah, well, I don't know if she's a queen. Are they all queens? Or are they just... Every drag queen is a drag queen. Oh, I don't all right. know. I was saying drag personality. Um, Trevor Donovan, who was on 90210, the reboot. Um, Gabby, Wendy is a bachelorette. She is crazy, and I don't typically like the Bachelorettes, but I like her because she says some stuff that's just cuckoo. And I don't like, really know any Bachelors. I don't know any of them, but the way she talks, like somebody will say something, and she'll be like, can you just say that louder for the people in the back of the room? Like She says things that like other people, like you wouldn't think they'd say. Like It's just funny. She's funny. Uh, Joseph uh, Vanina, who is Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. Um, Jason Lewis, who is from Sex and the City. He's Smith Jared. Summer Blair, who's best known for Cruel Intentions, and, uh, oh, and that was it. Yeah, she's the last one. Um, the judges, of course, are Carrie Ann and Arba. She's back. Derek Huff is back. Len Goodman um, and Bruno Tolioli. Tony Oli, um, who has a full head of gray hair and actually looks really good. And the lights, it looks really blue, good, though, though. But like, he's like you put purple still shampoo. just as handsome as he is. Um, Dancing with the Stars is the first live stream uh, show that Disney has had. Yeah. So they had, I did three episodes. So the first episode was Premiere Night Party, which they had to pick a song that makes them want to get up and dance. Um, Episode two was Elvis Night, and it was broken down into three different parts of Elvis's life, was Hollywood, Las Vegas life, and his early years. And then episode three was James Bond Night. So, um... Which I was wondering why they did James Bond night until I read the until I got the news that it was his sixtieth because I didn't hear them say that on the thing we were watching. Yeah, there you go. So for the first one, I broke it down into each person, and I'm going to cover them for each like all three of their things. Oh, like so, you're going to talk about yeah. all of like let's just say Teresa's dances. Now. Yeah. Okay. So Jordan Sparks did the foxtrot in her first episode. She got a twenty five, which wasn't bad. Um, What's the highest you can get? Do you know? Forty. Forty. Nobody ever gets that high. Like, this is like the first episode or first and second one, they always get like 25, 26, 27, 28. If somebody gets a 28, it's like, wow, you did really well. Or 29, you did really well. Yeah. So, her first one, she got 25. The judges said she was off to a good start. Um, she, her partner and her are very tall. So, um, they said that, you know, kind of makes it a little harder. Um, her second dance, I don't have her second dance now. Why not? Oh, my goodness. Oh. I was supposed to fill it in. Hmm. <laughs> you want me to try to look it up? You can look it up. Her third dance um, was the samba, and she got a 29. Oh. Um, I think she's going to be one of those that's going to fly under the radar where she's neither good and nor bad. She's and then she's just going to, like, yeah. towards the end when they're down to, like, say, five, they're going to be like, oh, crap, Jordan Sparks is still here. Like, you know. Quick step. Quick step. Um, 
doesn't say what she scored, does it? Um, I could try to bring it up really quick. It doesn't. Well, I mean, she obviously made it. Oh, yeah, she's 5'10". She's tall. Yeah, she's tall, and her partner's tall, too. Um, Well, that was better that they at least took the time and gave her a tall partner instead of being like, you have to dance with somebody who's short. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they could have... There was somebody who they did that with one year, I remember. Well, whoever Whitney Carson dances with, she got somebody really tall. And um, I can't remember who it was, but it was really tall. But that's okay. Um, so Sam Champion, I was so excited to see him dance. He's with Cheryl Burke. Um, and I thought they could go really far for some reason because I feel like Cheryl's a good dancer. Now, I mentioned that she was married to one of the uh, Lawrence boys, but I just saw something that said they are getting divorced. <laughs> you and, it. Well, no, they, they were getting divorced before I said it, but I didn't realize that. And the worst part, they're, they're going to court over custody over her dog. She said it was her dog, and she is not giving up custody of her dog. So he's actually finding her for custody of the dog. I thought that was so crazy, but um, well, I hope she wins her dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh so they've been they've been um, friends for years, and she's asked him multiple times, and all of a sudden he decided to come out. Oh, now. is he the one that we watch? And I was like, why the hell is he dancing like that? He had the blonde hair. He was. I don't know the one that you were like. Oh, she invited him on all these yeah. times, and and yeah, you're like, why did he? Why did she make yeah. him do this weird dance? Yeah. Um, so she's won before, so, you know, at least he's, he's dancing with a winner. Uh, for his first one, he did a foxtrot and he got a 20, not good. Um, which means he had all fives. The second dance, um, they did was the Viennese Waltz to Heartbreak Hotel. Um, they said he improved. Um, he, you know, but, and Cheryl was giving him tough, tough love. She's a tough dance partner. Um, she doesn't pull any punches with her partners because she wants to win. Her third dance with Sam Champion was, they were in the, um, he ended up in the bottom two. Um, and in episode one, Jason Lewis, I didn't get to say, he was the one that was eliminated. In episode two, Cheryl Ladd was limited, uh, eliminated. And in episode three, Teresa Judice. No, Teresa um, was eliminated in episode two. No. Yeah. Cheryl, I have Cheryl. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Cheryl Ladd was in episode three. Judice was two. Um, and the sad part was the way they're doing it now is like you vote and you become in the bot and they vote you into the bottom two. And now the judges pick who they want to save. It's funny. They don't say who they want to go home. They you change the to a positive yeah. and say, who do they want to save? So the first week they saved Teresa. The second week they saved Cheryl, um, Len, her partner. And now the third week they said, gotta go. Well, yeah, you end up yeah. in the bottom two yeah. twice. You should. Yeah. Um, Daniel Durant, um, it's he's probably one of my favorites because not only is it just amazing to see how somebody can dance without hearing music and just go off the vibrations and stuff. I mean, it's just remarkable. But he is actually good. Like that's what's crazy. He's got like good rhythm and stuff. And in season six, Niall DeMarco, I don't know who he is, but he was also a deaf dancer. He won the Mirabal Trophy. So. Very good chance that he could do it. And Marley Matlin, she was another deaf dancer. She did went really far, so chance he could do it. The first one, he did a tango, got a 27. He was one of the higher ones. Second dance, he did a jive. Um, and the third one, he did a rumba and got a 31. So he had the highest score, score that week. So he did pretty... Well, he had he was one of the ones with the highest score. Oh, that was his highest score yeah. um, out of all his dances. So he's doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, and uh, Heidi... D'Amelio, you said? D'Amelio. D'Amelio. Well, what's with the A, then? Don't ask me. I think it's D'Amelio. I think it's D'Amelio. She's actually pulling it out, man. No, not her. I'm sorry. The daughter is. She yeah, but did, the daughter does but, the little TikTok dance. I know, but I don't, I don't know how that's helping her. But she, this, the daughter's picking up the dances really good. The mom's picking them up good, too. Yeah, but like I said, I, when I, we were watching, listen, I know they're not, uh, like, th- listen, TikTok dances are really not much. There's a lot of waving your arms around. But you have to learn that dance so quick so that you can do it when it first becomes a trend so that you learn it, do it, post it, and you're not out of the trend because trends go like that yeah. through TikTok. So you really have to le- be able to pick up even these silly little wave your arms around very quickly. Yeah, so she should be able to at least pick something up. Yeah. So for her first one, she did the cha-cha. She got a 24. So it's like, it wasn't horrible, but it could have been definitely been better. Her daughter did, um, her daughter Charlie um, is dancing with Mark Ballas and scored the highest score that night. And I want to say she did the cha-cha too, but um, for her second dance, um, she's dancing with Artem. Um, she did the foxtrot. And I don't know what she got for her second dance. I don't know why I don't have that down. 
for her third dance though the judges said that she did her best dance and she got all she got a nine. Oh, every time she went she the second after the first week she said i want to get at least one seven so she got all sevens and then i'm sorry she wanted to get one eight so then she said for the next week she wants to at least get one nine and she did she got at least a nine so she, she said i guess i should just keep asking for the next score up so she was one of the first ones i think to get a nine um Teresa Judice was not good at all and i hate I to say did, that she i did didn't see table. any of them but she, i did see her do a tiktok dance and it wasn't good it was not good she did a table flip in the first dance and it was just like no you shouldn't have done it like why i don't know um i don't think if she had her choice she would have really done that because i think she wants to move away from that but she went with it i guess um she did the tango and got a 20 that's how bad she did oh uh yeah her second dance um she was with pasha uh, Pushkovo, Pushkovo. She did a jive to all shook up, and the judges said she needs to work on her legs and her timing. She was definitely in the bottom two, and she was de- she was eliminated. They had to let her go. Um, Wayne Brady, who I thought was going to be good, he came out, lit up the floor. He was with Whitney Carson, who's my favorite, so I have to like him. Um, <sighs> she's my favorite dancer. He got one of the highest scores. Um, he did a cha cha and got a twenty nine. Um, they said that he has to bring it down just a little bit because he came out real intense. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dog the, bite in the halls. The second dance that they did was the jive to burn in love. Um, and his third dance was tied for first place with Charlie and Gabby also. Um, yeah, when I you were watching, were a lot of 31. people tied or like, yeah. there was like ties. They, they kept just going, tied score. for six, yeah. tied for six. So he was get, he's getting better and I think he's doing more of what the judges are telling them. The ticket is you got to listen to the, what the judges tell you to do otherwise you're just going to be screwed and then Cheryl Ladd um she she's the best ever for 71 she just blew all uh, it was like you got to be kidding me for 71 and she was dancing like nobody's business um she's in such great shape she did the cha-cha for her first dance and got a 21 which was not great but they said to her we feel you could have done more so Louis Van Amstel was her partner he kind of upped the ante and for her second dance um she did a tango, and she messed up a couple of times with her feet, but he he said that, I think it's my fault, because I gave her, I was trying to do what they said and give her more, like, tougher stuff to do, and he said, I think it was too tough, like, he went too far to the other end, mm-hmm. um, and she messed up multiple times with her feet. The third dance, though, she did the rumba, and she got a 24. She was in the bottom two, um, and they were eliminated by the judges, and they saved Sam Champion, believe it or not. Sam Champion got saved that week. Um, Vinny. Vinny. Th- these New Jersey people are just not pulling it out. Right. Vinny from the Jersey Shore did really, really Whoa. bad. So like I said, he was really bad. Really bad, Vinny. Um, he was so stiff. He got the lowest scores. He did the salsa and got like a 17 out of 40. Oh my yeah. God. The judges said that he needs, that he let his partner do all the work. Um, in the second dance, Vinny and Coco Asaki, who's his partner, she looks like she could be really good. They did a quick, quick step to Viva Las Vegas, which he thought would be apropos because he's in, he has his show in Las Vegas, but... Oh, yeah, that's the one I watched. I'm like, why is he looking up, like, upward to the sky? Second week, he got the, lo- yeah, got the lowest scores again. Um, the judge said you know, he came back and did better, but, you know, he still has a lot more work. Third dance, he stumbled a lot and got a 23. At the third week, you should not be getting 23. How, how do you have no rhythm? Literally, the Jersey yeah, fist no pump is, be, is it's pumping your fist to the I rhythm. Said. Like, it's how like, are you yeah, not I don't doing know. that? Like, Listen, you need to find the, the beat. Like, so Teresa, how do you not maybe know you can the beat? excuse, right? But you had a whole show where you walked around and you fist pumped. Yeah, it was about you fist pumping to the beat. So, I, I, I'm confused myself. Yeah. Um, oh my God, this oh, is embarrassing. I just lost myself. Hold on. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Chandrila is the first drag personality on Dancing with the Stars. She is really good. She has a good attitude. Um, I, I think missed, she I didn't see any go, of her dances. Oh, I think she could go all like the way. Half style she says that when she's practicing, she is in her male form, and when she's dancing on stage, she's in her female form. Just because it's simply too much you work. Want to do. all that makeup. Well, on. she said it's just simply too much um, to do. Um, and her well, partner, Ga- Gleb. Is very excited because he's like, like I know, to him he's heard part of, of Gleb. Who was Gleb? Yeah, Gleb. He was there last time. Um, Gleb uh, Sabachenko. Oh, Sabachenko. Yep, there's it. Gleb. Yeah, but I think I've seen Gleb with dance with somebody that I. Is this this is Gleb? Yeah, he's danced with um. Uh, Who has Gleb danced with? 
Somebody that it I feel like we've heard of. Probably. That's advancing with the stars. Oh my god. My laptop just died. Are you serious? Okay, well, I'm going to keep going while you do whatever you're doing. It's, but wait, I was just going to say, Gleb said, it said that Gleb was on an Australian version, too, of Dancing with the Stars. So this isn't, like, the first time. Oh, no, a lot of them come from the others, yeah. I didn't even know there was other versions. Oh, yeah, no, there is. That's cool. Um, so. I'll be back. <laughs> um, Make sure the laptop She got working. the highest score at the time and knocked um, Wayne out at the top. Um. For her second dance, she did uh, the quick oh. step to shake, rattle, and roll. The third dance she did was to the, was a rumba, and she got... Um, they said that she needs to work her legs more because... Can you push the table more towards me? I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, it wants to tip over. Sorry, it's, it wants to tip over instead of moving. Okay, great. This is so, so, so hard over They here. said now that they've like seen what she's done, um, she did get a 30. I'm sorry. I'm going to fall again. I'm so sorry. Every episode I have to fall. <laughs> I'm like holding onto your back like it's a big Yeah, I mean, my luck, you'll pull me all down with my chair and crack my head open. And we're good. All right, so tell Are me. Are we about. really though? Yeah, you were good. All right, so she got a thirty, but the judges said she has to work on her feet and her placement and extending her legs and all that oh, kind of stuff. We're back. Were we not back before? No, the computer's oh, back. I'm great. saying. All right, so Trevor Donovan, um, he actually has a oh. fear of dancing. Oh, what? Oh, I know where we know Gleb from. Erica Jane's partner. Gleb. Mm, yeah. Yes. The whole Gleb thing. Didn't they yeah. say they flirted together? I don't know nothing about that. Oh. Um, he did the quick step, got a 21. Second dance he did with Emma Schlater, a rumba, and um, he went up nine points. Third dance, they said it was his best dance. Um, third dance he did a tango and received 27, which is not bad, but he should have done better considering how well he did the second week. But... They said he still has some stuff to work on, but for someone that has a legitimate fear of dancing, did pretty good. Is he the blonde guy? Yeah. Oh. He's the tall blonde guy. Um, and here we have a bachelorette, Gabby Windy. Um, she got put with Val um, Chermakovsky. I can't get it right, but everybody knows Val. You know Val. Yeah. Um, he told her that the bachelorettes have a history of doing really well, so she's got a lot of pressure. Really? Um, yeah. She did the best dance of the night, according to Derek. She it was a cheerleader, so you know to me like I know that's not dancing, but you do have some kind of rhythm. Like a lot of football players, when you think about you it, win because they do the ballet classes for but, the ad, the agile. But stuff. here's my thing, to me like a cheerleader, it's the same thing like you said with the tic tac dance. You have to learn routines fairly fast. Even in the so drag queen too. Yeah, just learning the routine things is half the battle because you have to learn them. Yeah. All, you know, fairly fast. So. But even even football, anywhere where you have to be able to pick up something quickly and change it every week. Yeah, that's where you're changing. You do have a like you're gonna have as long as you have I like something do, where you I can would learn do bad with that. Yeah, but um, so she she did really well. Um, she did a jive and got a twenty eighth second dance. She did a vin Vinnie's waltz and did really well as well. Vinnie's 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 Vinnie's. Okay. I can't say. Yeah. I don't know. She. On th- week three, she was now newly engaged, and um, she said she was. She did her third dance was going to be a cha cha. The judges loved it. Um, she could be in the running for a winner. They said she got. Her they first, said that. Yeah, she got her first nines of the season. Um, Joe Benina, uh, Benina, yeah, danced the jive, and he got a twenty three out of forty. It was not the best, but this poor guy's got a lot of challenges. He's big and bulky because he's a you know he's Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, so he's into the weightlifting, following his father's footsteps. However, he is Latin, so he said he should have more rhythm than what he's having. So um, they thought that it was going to be really hard for his size because you know he comes from strong like a strong you know yeah. presence. But they said he didn't do that bad. His second dance he did um, was a Viennese waltz as well. He did well. Um, sadly, for the third. No, I'm sorry, for that second dance, he had to dance with a new partner because his partner tested positive for COVID. So unfortunately for him, his oh my. his partner had, sorry. the partner that he got had to learn the dance that morning. Yeah. So they did pretty they well. They did good, for, I saw that yeah, one. Yeah, they did pretty well. So for the third dance, at least he got, he was doing a tango, but at least he was with the partner that he danced the second one with, so they got to start at least together, and, and so that he did well as well. Jason Lewis, sadly, it's so sad, he was... Who's Jason Lewis? He's the guy from Sex and the City. He was so oh. stiff. Um, I was so disappointed because who doesn't love Smith Jared? But he did the cha-cha. He got an 18. Oh, mm. God. 
That was the first week 18. They said um, he has timing issues. He was counting out loud. He was not breathing. He was eliminated the first week. How loud was he counting that they could hear him? Yeah, that's what's sad. So he was eliminated the first week. Really sad. Um, Selma Blair. Uh, pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie. I saw one of them. She has MS, and she's dance. She was dancing in the Viennese Walls. Um, that was an, a good one for her, I think, to start with because it was slow, you know. But the type of MS that she has creates like balance issues and vision issues. And from what she was saying going forward, like her left leg, she can't really properly move it unless she feel touches it or something. So it's very hard for her to like get that leg going. I wonder going. if he could. Like, like you mean like some? T- I think like, he's starting to f- realize stuff like that, like where he's like gonna put his hand there. Well, yeah, that's what or I was saying. Like, I wonder if he that, could put yeah. his hand there to like. A lot while of these dancing. dancers, I have to give them props. They are all learning ways to dance with their partners. Like, like the guy that's got the fear and the um, the guy that's deaf. Like, they all have to figure out ways to like help their partners. Like with him, he has, and they're also good friends. They live, they're neighbors down the street. So like, she, he was very happy that he got her, and vice versa. Um, Second dance she did was the jive, and yeah, that's a when fast I saw. dance, and she did pretty good. She kept her balance the whole time. Third dance she did a rumba, and she got a twenty-eight, um, and she danced the whole dance blindfold. I didn't see that. She did the whole thing blindfold. I remember I said to you, I wonder if she's blindfold, if that she can see through that. She was blindfolded. She oh, maybe see. I saw a bit of that. I think that was the last. Yeah, dance I don't know if you were really paying attention. I wasn't paying to attention it, to Hannah. I don't think. So now we're down to uh, Charlie D'Amelio. Is that Cooper making this? Yeah. <laughs> um, she is with Look at you, Mark, got the name Yeah, she is Mark Ballas Who is finally back after multiple, multiple seasons of being gone With his bun um, they <laughs> That's comment why I was laughing because I read your comments I, on his bun all I the time I said Mark yeah. Ballas and his um, bun <laughs> He's, you know, the judges said she did amazing He's a great dancer He comes up with the best routines He's won multiple times too, I yeah. believe um, Len said that the cha-cha was not easy to do And he, she got a 32. She did really well. The second dance she did, she did a quick step. Um, she did really well on that. Um, the third dance, she did a rumba. She got a 33. She had the highest score, and I think she had her first nine that week. Jesse James Decker, she should go home. Uh-oh. I just don't think she's that good. I didn't even put what her first dance was because it was unmemorable. Oh. It was really bad. She's with Alan... Burns, Burns, I don't and, know Adam. who either she's, they are. I just, she's just, I mean, she's a country singer, so we wouldn't know, oh. but she did a fox, foxtrot, and they said she, they need, she work, needs to work on her legs, her techniques. They said, um, she took the comments from the first week and did apply them, but um, her third dance was the tango, and she got a 26, which, again, 26, she should be doing better than that. Um, and that was, like, her best score. Yeah. So, she's not doing that good, in my opinion, but do you want to do your next one? Yeah, I'll do mine, and then I'll do, and then I'll do, oh, is that all you have for girls and it's just this and this. Okay, yeah, because yeah, then I'll do my little season two of Kung yeah, Fu. Yeah, because I've condensed this down to how I did the other, like the hose where I yeah. did the girls, like I spoke of each, I'm going to speak of each girl. Okay, so Kung Fu, I watched episodes 9 through 13. A little bit more did happen, obviously, because this is the finale now. But there are a few corrections I want to make to last week. Um, one, I said that they were speaking Chinese. No, they're speaking Mandarin and Cantonese. So I wanted to... Well, Correct myself on that. I apologize. Yes, it's it was very not important. I know I was not paying full attention there. Like I did say though, I was I was playing Fortnite when I was watching that show. This time when I watched it, I was and not I, I'm it. sorry, but I just have to speak on this. Would you really truly know the difference between Mandarin? Yes, Cantonese. No, 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 no. Oh. You don't have a subtitle. If you're listening to someone talk, would you know if they're talking in Chinese, Japanese, Mandarin, or Cantonese? I would not know. No, I personally know I wouldn't know. I wouldn't we're know. Not, we don't know anything. So that's why I'm saying it's, you know, good you correct yourself, but it's not something like you just totally been like, they were speaking French, yeah, but I it was Spanish. Yeah, if I miss the subtitles, you it know comes up. Because, like, sometimes where it's like... It'll like say... Like the sub-Cantonese or Mandarin. It will say in... in it, so it said in... Uh, well, they also made a big point of saying it because the one guy said he was learning, I think, Cantonese for their grandmother. Like, this was a B-plot storyline. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know... So they they mention that, but also when they sometimes will speak, it will pop up and say, speaking in Mandarin. And then, like, the actual subtitles that come in the show will be on the screen, but they don't No, I know, but I that. just, I meant, like, yeah. you didn't but I wanted to... like, you weren't deliberately being disrespectful. No, I just wasn't paying attention. That was truly what happened there. Um, oh, and then also... If you didn't have subtitles, you wouldn't know. No, and I always have to have my subtitles on. 
Um, and also the reason for wanting the sto- the sword was because you get the power called Bienga, Bianca, Bianca. Yeah. Once again, there's some words that they all say mm-hmm. and they all say it a little bit Bien-gi. different. Bienga, Bienga, Bienga. Mm-hmm. Once, yeah. like how I said the Jalan, they all kind of say it differently. Like they'll all like add, like somebody will add like more of like a pronunciation on the z or the an part. So it's like, I don't know. I just kind of take pieces from both and try my best. Bienga. Um. So that's why Zillan wants it, though, so that nobody can ever betray her again, and she wants to unlock the power that she will receive from these. Um, so, as I said last week, Nikki found out that her aunt was one of the uh, warriors from Lingdayu, and her and Henry used these letters from her aunt to find her last location, and Nikki ends up finding out that she has passed, but she left basically like a chest full of recordings on the uh, Bianca and she uses these recordings. Wait, on the weapon there's recordings? No, no, no. Like the ant the ant was researching the weapons and oh, she the energy source and she on. left like tape recordings for Oh, I thought you meant like on the sword thing. No, I'm no, like, no. Oh, those things hold them. Well, they do have magic powers. No, but them, I'm so. like, what do they got? Like a, you know, pop up like a little Star Wars. Like, yeah, she got like a little recorder in there. Yeah. That's like what that's what Star Wars lightsaber that we like saw in the store where you would press in the <laughs> thing and you would record it and we'd, we'd, we'd leave say bad, bad things. things in the kids' eye. <laughs> Not nice. Um, so the ants' recordings end up revealing that the eight the weapons were separated and given to eight monks so that the power could be diminished and that if they were all back, they brought always do that. Back, they always break that shit down so that everybody has to find the pieces. Yeah. Well, then if you bring the all the pieces back to the forge, the power will return. And uh, Zilan works with. Kurt Tan, who I said was played by Ludi Lin, who I said I, he was like, he appeared at the end, but now he's like officially in the show. Um, his father, Russell Tan, has three of the weapons, and his father's factory was actually the cause of her mother's death because she got sick from working, like, exposed to these chemicals in the factory, and her mom ended up dying with her via via childbirth. I'm not like, that's how you say it. During childbirth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Zillan does end up getting all eight weapons, and she realizes where the forge is about the same time that Nikki does. And through all this, Henry and Nikki are finally officially dating, so we don't have to deal with her ex. Still didn't learn his name, because I really don't care to, but clearly he's a prominent character. Um, And then Zillan and Curran are kind of like, he, I think, thinks he's dating her, but she really wasn't dating him, because you'll see. She ends up turning around, like, you know, backstabbing him. Um, Nikki, though, finds out that her grandma actually had the sword at one point when she was younger. In one whole piece? No, like, the sword's in one piece, and then there's eight different weapons. So there's, like, eight unique weapons, let's just say. Like, there's, like, a sword. Oh, so she had one of them. Yeah, the sword was the one that the, uh, her grandmother had at one point. Oh. And, um, she also found out... What did she do with it? She got rid of it? She left it, I think, with then, uh, uh, Pele... Pele had it oh. because she found out that Pele's mother actually taught her grandmother kung fu, like taught her it back then to show that, like there was clearly a reason that she ended up in this monastery at one point was because they are all all linked. Because I don't think I took notes on this, but it might get confusing towards the end. So I should probably mention the eight monks that took it. They all, I guess, had descendants, so there became eight guardians through the bloodline. So that's what Zelan is. She's a guardian. Mm. So that's why she wants it. But um, Nikki is a warrior. So there's like the one warrior and then like the eight guardians of this, um, of each weapon basically. And Nikki realizes that the forge is the monastery and she's going to have to miss her sister Althena's wedding so that she could try to get there before Zlan, which I was so shocked. She actually completely misses the wedding, doesn't do anything for the wedding. And the wedding was like the second biggest plot line for the whole season was like her sister gonna ha- was gonna have her big wedding i know like we saw like bits and pieces of, well we didn't see them actually get married but we saw like a tea ceremony for it but we never like no she completely missed the wedding tea ceremony is very big um house house will tell you so there you go uh so she ends up going with henry to the monastery and that's where she runs into uh, Zillan and Zillan says that there needs to be a warrior, Nikki, and a protector herself to enter this forge. And once they get in there, they realize that this there was like these women that they were training to like suck the energy out of the forge, put it in themselves so that they could like leave with it or something. Uh, why did someone just walk me through a door? 
No. Um, so they realize that the woman has removed the energy, and they track her down, and at the same exact time, uh, Russell Tan finds the woman, and he ends up killing her, and he ends up taking all the weapons, and when they kill her, the energy, like, shoots out of the woman and shoots into, like, both Nikki and Zalan. And Nikki ends up defeating Zalan by, like, making her give up the energy. Like, she every time she hits her, like, it comes out of her. Mm-hmm. So it goes, like, back into the earth because, like, she has, like, this whole vision. And she's like, she can't give it up because then the world will bland her. I don't know. That was a little side plot, too. And I was like, okay. Um, and they also end up destroying most of the weapons because they use the weapons in the fight. So they all end up either cracking or what's left of them, I believe... The sword goes to the monastery, so she gives it back to the monastery that reopened up and are now training again. So they're the protectors of the sword now. And Russell Tan takes his son, Kerwin, um, who is in a coma, because like I said, Zelan betrayed him. She tried to kill him, like, in revenge for his, uh, to his father. And Russell Tan plans to use a long-lost cousin of Nikki's to take her down. Overall, though, I enjoyed the show. Like I said, a lot of plots, but that's just CW. Um, and that's really, like, yeah. This review that I gave it last week, because I did watch, I feel like, enough to give it, like, a review. I do like it. Obviously, like I said, I'm going to finish it out. It's definitely one of those ones where you're, like, if you watched it and someone cut the CW logo out at the beginning, I don't think you would think it was a CW show. No. Like, it does have that, like, um, like there's sometimes where you'll see, like, a CW show always doesn't have the biggest budget. But, you know, there's Netflix shows that you watch where the budget looks a little wonky. You know, not everything's going to be perfect. But there are, so for the most part, I think it looks really good. And I think that's why I do want to stick with it is because it doesn't remind me of a CW show. Of a CW show. Yeah. Like, if, let's just say CW decides to cancel this show, Mm -hmm. I think they could be put on HBO Max and be. Interesting. Be just fine because, yeah, I think it's good. I think the cast, like I said, is really good. Like, one of the things CWs will we always do best, in my opinion, they're one pro. They can cast, like, really good families that really look alike. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, yeah, even yeah. if you think, even if you, you... almost believe that they're... Yeah, even if you go, like, I'm going to bring up Legacies, because it's, it, this is like a rogue one here, but, like, when you look at the Saltzmans, right, Josie and Lizzie, you think these girls don't look alike, but Lizzie Saltzman looks a lot like Caroline, And Josie looks a lot like Joe. Like, they picked actresses that matched, you know, both of their, like, mothers. And neither of them look like Alaric as they should not look like him at all. Um, Can't even get into that. But, like, you know, they do really good casting. We're like, they'll have Nikki and her sister Althena next to each other. And I'm like, I would believe that those actresses are, like, Related. related in real life. Like, even, like, characters that were, like, side characters, like, mother or daughter will really look alike, in my opinion. All right, so you do your Girlfriends in Paris, and then I'll do my little bit the first episode I watch of season two so that, you know, when you come back next week, you'll kind of know what I'm going to be discussing. Okay. What's going on behind me? Sissy's being a fat whore. <gasps> Stop her. No, she cannot have that. She has no calories. <laughs> She's got to poop. You have no calories left. It's the weekend, say. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm finishing you. She doesn't care. Really? And it's old, sis. It's all over her mouth, falling all over the place. I can't. <sighs> well, put her in for another half a calories. <laughs> half a calories, my butt. Okay, go. Real Girlfriends in Paris, season one. Um, I did episode. I just forgot already. One oh my god. Six, I think it was. <laughs> um. Let me just see. One through six. Yes. And it looks like there's ten episodes. Uh, it airs Monday on Peacock. It's a Peacock Some, original. Oh, it's a Peacock original? Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, it's kind of like a little bit of a real life Emily in Paris. Um, I want Cheetos. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> We can't have them. Why is nobody make vegan Cheetos? I don't know. But gotta Sorry, get on it. I felt that urge to say that. You always interrupt with food, so I thought oh, I'd do I'm it for you that, this episode. I want Cheetos too. But Ooh, I want Cheetos. We've tried multiple Cheetos too in a vegan style, and some of them are good. I've never had one that I liked. But, I'm a, no, she's never had one I'm that she's like. My tongue but I can't say that any of them 
I've liked some of them. I want a Cheeto puff that's the but, swirl ones. But the they curls. don't taste like Cheetos. They're good, but the they spirals. don't. They're spiral Cheeto puffs yeah. for Zach. I don't even know if they make that anymore. They don't, but... All right. All right, I'm so sorry. So it is a group of girls. There is, let me see. Um, I say five is my guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, I believe, Damn for them. It. Yeah, there's six of them. Um, there is Aya, uh, Aya, Anya. Anya, who um, she's kind of the mother figure of them all, and she's trying to uh, find them a Parisian husband, kind of, or a boyfriend. Um, but they all refer to each other as ex Parisian? Yeah, Parisian Paris. Oh. Um, they refer to each other as expats, uh, expats, which is like, you know, a person from America that's no longer there. Um, expats. Yeah, that's what they call them, expats. Interesting. Um, so there's Victoria. She's 25 from Texas, and she's been living in Paris for two years, um, like permanently. Um, she's been doing fashion design for the past eight years. When she was 17, she moved to Paris on a full-ride scholarship to Parsons, Paris, which is just the dream school. I wanted to go to Parsons in New York, but Parsons, Paris is like, that's the school to be at. She had a full ride, so it means she's not dumb. Um, so right now she's the head designer for Chloe Collette, um, which is a new uh, new fashion house that's starting up. Um, I've heard of it, though, so I don't I know like how, I've heard of yeah, it. I don't know how new, but um, she had gotten married when she was younger. Uh, I think she said she was 21 when she got married. Oh, my God. Yeah, because it was what was expected of her. Like, her family expected that you go to school, you get married, and, you know, X, Y, and Z. So um, she has come out as bisexual, and she has kept that to herself for all these years because she, I guess, didn't feel like her family would understand. Um, I believe she only shared it with the one girlfriend that's here, uh, Margo. Um, She's been talking to a girl that lives in London, a meal and um right now she's working on her up and coming paris show for the paris fashion week um then there's casey who's from california and she's been living in paris for three years on and off um she is what i guess she's calling herself a teacher she does odd jobs and is presently trying to get her visa by the end of episode six she had to go back home because her visa she could when you over that work you have to have someone sponsor you to work yeah. there so because she doesn't have like an actual teaching job um nobody sponsored for them to sponsor her it's like one of those things where you have to have a teaching you have to have somebody from this school sponsor you but you have to have a visa to get a job in a school so how are you going to do that so like instead she, she was trying okay, to get now this show sponsor her I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But she had to go back home because the only way to fix this now is to go back home and reapply for a visa to come back. So she unfortunately had to go back home to fix her visa situation. Um, And then there's Aja, who is 25 from New York. She's been living in Paris for three years. Um, She feels like being over in Paris, she can be whoever she wants to be because nobody there knows her. They know nobody knows what she's about, so she can be whatever she wants. She works for an e-commerce company. Um, She's been running like through a roster of guys and just dating uh, this one guy, Alex, a bartender. But I think it's mostly because she's like afraid to like commit to anybody. But towards the end of season of season episode six, she does decide that I think she's going to date him like uh, permanently. Um, And then there's. Anya, who is 32. She's the oldest of the group. She's the one that I said was the mother figure. She's from New York, but she's been living in Paris for 10 years. Um, She's very cultured. When she got there, she was giving tours in the Louvre and charging like a lot of money. But she knows a lot about art and culture and all the kind of stuff Mm -hmm. in Paris. So um, they all consider her like their mother person over there in France and she takes care of them. Like she hosted an American Thanksgiving. and she had them all over and they were all like in awe of what she does but i just love seeing like their apartments and it's just wait so nobody's actually from france no these are all americans they're all expats they all moved to france um which is which is well you know what it's good because this i thought so too that's when i watched this initially whole different thing i thought anya was from france because she was there the longest in the way she talked but then she didn't have an accent i'm like so she's not from france they all all except for um, Victoria is totally bilingual. They all can speak French. Like um, Casey took French in high school, at all through high school, so she's very fluent. 
Um, Victoria can kind of like understand and dabble. Aja, she's also can speak fluently in French because her family is Creole or I forget. She's got a couple of different places that speak French that she and maybe Haitian or something. So she has a lot of French and her family. There's some family that's living in France right now. Um, Emily is 22. She's from New York. She's been in Paris for two years. She came to study interior design and is doing none of that. Um, she has a job. She's probably the youngest, I think, out of all of them. She has a job right now with, with a family friend that got her into the business. So hopefully she can make that stick because she's in, they all seem a little unreliable and not know what they want to do. But, you know, I guess this is the age to do that. Um, and then there's Margot, who's 26. She's she has dual citizen dual citizenship she's from new york and paris um her parents are divorced her father basically bought her her paris apartment which i thought he better have because that was a really nice apartment um she gets two hundred two thousand dollars a month from him to live off of she still um, has child support yeah basically she gets child support from her dad uh it has <gasps> wow. gotten, well her dad is i forgot what she said her dad owned something and he he has a lot of money, so well, he can afford... Well, then I get the but, short end of the stick. Who knew you could get child support up to 26? It's not child support. He's been paying for her this whole time. Hmm. Uh, this is beyond child support. Um, Damn it. Yeah. But he is telling her she now has to kind of get herself together and, like, start making, you know, uh, some real moves. She's went to college. She's done this, that, and the other thing and has done nothing yet. Every time you turn around, she's, like, starting a new venture or something. It's ridiculous. Um, uh she ended up with COVID. She was one of the only ones that got COVID. Um, and her family has a, this just shows you what her family, they have a chateau oh. in Cannes. So she takes all the girls there uh, in like episode six to Cannes to like show them her, her family house and stuff like that mm-hmm. and spend, you know, just have like a weekend there. They throw Anya who's getting married to a Frenchman that she met in Paris um, about a little bachelorette party because she's had to put off her wedding for like two years because of COVID. Yeah. Um, and it's it's like the housewives, but for a much younger generation. But it's still it's still fun. It's any anybody that loves Paris or anything Paris France type thing. Um, I highly recommend it. It was better than what I thought it was going to be. I don't know what Are I. Are they going to teach you how to say hit the button in French? Um, I don't know, but I am going to learn that. I'm going to work on yeah, that. Yeah, because you were week. supposed to, because if you listen to our Andor episode, I told her she has to learn that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to work on it. But um, but I can, by listening to them, they are helping me with um, my French because there is, like, there's certain sayings that, like, you know how we say, like, like you would say good morning to somebody if you wanted to be more professional, but, like, if it was you or, like, if I just went to see, like, you know, Dean or them, I'd be like, hey, hey, what's up? Like, yeah, we yeah. have, like, different, like, Slime. this, yeah, this kind of shows you, like, what you would say. Like, I can take by them, like, what... The like, oh, like, in Spanish, when they teach you, like, a formal greeting. Yeah, like, when like they that's... Well, them, they do like, that in adults. French. There's, like, certain greetings yeah. that you would use and, like... So, and there's a lot of words that they're saying that I'm picking up what they're putting down, and I'm like, I uh, know what they're saying, so... So, this may turn into a half-French podcast. I have still yet to choose a language to speak i took a little spanish in school but i don't remember any of it because well, you were trying to do the spanish weren't you a little bit i no? was trying to do spanish because i think spanish is a good language to learn the second most spoken language in our country besides oh, english yeah. so i think it's a good one to have but i think i'm gonna stick with trying to learn sign language because i'm actually really interested in that so i would probably do that but that's not really gonna do with um anything for anybody <laughs> as far as no but it just... could do for you to get you a job oh <laughs> We we used to have a um no I people that would come through with people translating no I know I'm just time. saying um yeah but well I mean I'm saying right now for the podcast you could speak French yeah. and somebody would understand you I can't obviously sign right now because nobody would can't see us so maybe once we start getting uh once we do maybe a live video I'll imagine I did that I sat there and I signed the whole time Isn't that physical? the only my only issue is though I have really bad carpal tunnel so my hands hurt so I think that would be well, like I wonder what happens with people with sign language like, my that might be the only thing um but yeah maybe maybe i'll venture into spanish we'll just be sitting here talking two totally different languages to each other yeah there you go all right let me do do you have an issue that ain't me i know it ain't you all right so season two episode one of kung fu starts with a like but you don't have the whole episode no, I have all of episode one. Oh, okay. Just not the whole season. So okay. a mystery girl breaks into Nikki's house. 
Um, and her ask, her ex asks, who does she think it could um, be? And then she ends up realizing that this girl um, stole her research and he gives her the name Sasha. So Nikki ends up going to find Sasha's hideout, which I'm just going to say right now, Sasha in quotes here. Um, hideout and she finds that she has a matching bracelet to the same exact one that her mom has and when she asks her mom she says that her aunt also had this bracelet oh, is um, that like a cousin you think yeah Remember what we said the first three times that we were done being nosy? We lied. Now we are, but how are we not when you're when we hear a man telling his three year old daughter to get the F word out of the room? Really? Come on, yeah, you have to be knows. nosy. Alright, alright, so let's get back to it. Alright, so what I was saying about the bracelets. She calls her mom, she finds out that the aunt had given uh the well the grandmother had gave both her daughters the the you matching bracelet. Far away from this. But I'm talking pretty loud, so I think I I'm know. Fine. But that's it, it oh. would be easier if you were. Okay, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. So she gave them each a matching bracelet, and they were supposed to pass it down to her daughters. And Nikki's mom said, "Well, I just kept mine because I never, I didn't want to pick between, you know, her two daughters." So she figured, "I'm just gonna keep it for myself." But that makes her realize that the is that the drill? Yeah, that's the drill. The drill. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, we hope you cannot hear it. We apologize if you can, though. Yeah, just um, go. So. <laughs> So, um, so she realizes that, okay, the, whoever must have taken this, they didn't take the bracelet. She found the matching bracelet so that the, the bracelet must belong to her, um, aunt's daughter. And she ends up meeting up with who she thinks is Sasha, but her real name is Mia and realizes that Sasha was actually sent by Russell Tan to hunt down. I think, I don't know if they said Mia or both of them or just one of them, but obviously they were coming for, um, them and Nikki ends up bringing Mia home because I think it is the new year so they're like celebrating and we also find out that Jalan is in prison and Karen has woken up from his coma like his dad kept him and now he's like awake so that's pretty much all it a lot to you don't think that much happens but that was a lot so I took a little extra notes because I figured I'm only going to cover episode one for now but I'll okay, keep Lego Masters down mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah all right so uh, speaking of Lego Masters what we're watching next week uh, we have Beverly Hills, the reunion, <laughs> and like we said, if you if you didn't listen to the Southern Charm part and you just jump into the end to know what we're gonna watch, um, we are going to do uh, a bonus episode that's gonna come out on Wednesday because the reunion technically goes up on Wednesday, but we've said a couple of times now that we don't watch till Thursday, so we're gonna put a bonus episode up. We're gonna rank taglines, we're gonna rank reunion outfits, you know, overall thoughts mm-hmm. of the season as a whole. Maybe um, the trailer, like, was it oh, accurate yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah like I forgot that. we said we're going to do yeah. So, yeah, that will be up on Wednesday. And then this Friday is also the She Hulk finale. How sad. Mm-hmm. And Andor, I that think it's fast. six. I wrote the wrong six. Andor is going to be episode six this week. Um, Andor will still remain Friday once She Hulk has ended, by the way, in case you're wondering. That's what we're just going to stick with. Um, and then we're also going to do a halloween special that that's at the end of the month that's gonna be our binge yeah. uh, because we did have a realization even though we didn't post our binge that we scheduled we ended up did do like selena plus chef and we did you know all other these other things, episodes yeah. so we did technically give you bonus episodes that month um there was something i was gonna add to that oh because it reminded me when i thought of halloween um i didn't mention this last week but we have a little fall icon up right now with some little leaves on our tv to get into the fall spirit so that will be up till the end of november and then we'll go with a little winter one for you know december and after that because i'm very strict on when you can have your decorations up for the holidays um as for me what can you expect me to watch this week obviously i'm gonna finish kung fu and then i'll I'll, so i'll come back next week with season two and then the first two episodes of season three that's what i should have done um abbott obviously am i gonna miss a week no never um, and I think then I'm going to probably start American Auto. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm going to do, like, the American Auto, Grand Kuru, Girls 5 Ever, and Rutherford Falls first. Just because they're shorter, there's only one or two seasons for them. So I'll be able to finish them fast instead of doing, like, a long watch like Veep. That's my plan. Um, and then I think that's... Oh, I'm Breaking Bad. Okay. I'm actually going to... Um, 
attempt at least episode one of Breaking Bad because um, the real reason I've been trying to watch this is because of Dean, who, you know, this is his third mention now. He's been requesting that one of us watch this, and she won't watch it, but I said, I'll give it a chance, like I said. Oh, I know. I won't like it. it remind, I was like, maybe this is like the male version of Good Girl. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a chance. Dean's birthday is coming up, so I told him, you know what? As my gift to you, I will watch the show so that when I see you on your birthday, we can talk about it. So yeah, I will try to watch that, but you know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Cut the crap. No, I just lied right to his face then. The kid has a bum ankle, and I lied to him. I mean, maybe it'll happen, but at least if let... I had to be a betting woman, I'd say. You want to make a bet? No, I no. I don't bet with my money. My money goes one place and only one place. The bills. Mm, do you want to bet with a snack? Ooh. No. Oh. Never. I'm not betting I'll get anything. you a Lay's chips if I don't no. watch it. Because <laughs> you'll just be opening Pandora's box and what kind of Nobody even you? knows the true depth of a Lay's chips. We, need, we we would need a lifestyle podcast to get into that. I'd Maybe need one therapy day. after that. But I could taste them. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. Tell us what you're going to watch, please, before you go off the deep end. Probably Kardashians. A girl friends. My in Paris. Paris. Yeah, my Below Deck Mediterranean, Southern Charm, second ep- uh, second part of the reunion, um, Dancing with the Stars, of course. And I don't know what yet, but I'm going to look for a comedy. But you know what? They're hard to... Oh, I got Call Me Cat. I'm sorry, I'm behind. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you about... Yeah, yeah. it was on our calendar. I knew it was on September. and I forgot, but I'm going to try so to... So you have yeah. to bring that next week. Yeah, I'll bring it. I think you should watch Abbott. I, I think you should stop it. <laughs> oh my god well, well, she doesn't just... think any of my comedies are funny either so name one not... name one call me cat you don't like that i've never well, like i've big never bang. tried it i've exactly. never tried it she doesn't try any of them i've asked her to watch big bang with me a lot never okay well here's the thing i've one never tried them so here's my thing though but i see i i put them at the bottom of my list because when you show me that there's american audio and i know i like a workplace sitcom i'm gonna watch that before i'm gonna watch that so look, once I finish these, maybe I'll watch Big Bang. Big Bang is a workplace uh, comedy. It's they a, are scientists. I, Nuclear oh, physicists. I only ever see them in that apartment. And listen, I'll give it a chance because Kelly, Kelly Kiyoko? Kiyoko? Kelly Koko. Koko? Kuko? Kuoko. <laughs> Kuku. 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 Uh, is it pronounced the same way you pronounce Haley Kiyoko's? I have no idea. Oh, God. All right. Well, let me just say, she's really good as Harley Quinn. And I was afraid I was gonna feel like I was gonna hear too much of her voice, but she puts a little accent on there, so it doesn't. It doesn't. Listen, I'm a Harley Quinn fan, but you know when Harley Quinn has that like p- pitched voice, that high squeaky pitch, I hate mm. that. She has like a good one where she kind of has that like. No, I'm not gonna do an impersonation because I don't want it out there on the internet. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. She does a really good voice job, so that I, I would, you know, I maybe I'll check it out. I'll put it. It's on I my gotta fix those favorite tiles. It okay, has is that all you're going to watch? Me nuts. Days yeah. of Our Lives? Oh, Days of Our Lives. I mean, uh, these people, we found out that there's an exotic flower that should save the women that are dying. <sighs> I can't with that joke. I can't either. It's it's the best. Um, It's the best of the worst. But you know it. what? We can just save our sitcom talk because guess what? Oh, and they found the murderer. Sorry. Oh, good. Um, because the, the Halloween episode that we're going to do, we're going to talk about our, our favorite comedy Halloween episodes, so yes, she will have to endure me talking about Brooklyn Nine Nine. I have Parks to watch them, don't I? Oh, oh you're so... gonna watch them? I thought we were supposed to watch I don't each other. What we sitcoms. were gonna do? I thought we were supposed to watch each other. We sitcoms. gotta work this out. <laughs> I, I thought that. Well, see, clearly two different pages. I don't know. I just took notes. Listen, I have my I have my book with and on our list is to plan out that Halloween episode. So let's get on it. Damn it. Yeah, oh. that'll be tomorrow. We gotta play Fortnite and have a snack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did want to add one more thing too. I just remembered. I know, I know. I see you in pain. She, she, she get, she's like, every time I say, oh, one more thing. She's like, no, go ahead. Ah, she wants go to ahead. tear her, pull her from her eyes down her skin, her body. Go ahead. Um, I want to just let everybody know, after we finish Beverly Hills, we're going to go on to OC. We're going to do a rewatch oh, yeah. of OC. Yeah, yeah. Um, to lead into the, hopefully, the new season. Maybe, like, in December time is probably when they're going to air. Yeah. So we're going to do that. And it's going to... Well, we're going to figure out how we're breaking it down. Yeah, but you had a good idea. Like, she was thinking about maybe, like, uh, like you know, when there's a fight, like... It's usually, like, Beverly. arc. Yeah, like a little arc. Like, maybe we'll do them in arcs, if if yeah. it works out that way. Yeah. <coughs> so, Excuse we'll me. see. If not, then 
you know just, we figured that would be interesting because i've never seen oc time. you've I seen haven't. oc so it's gonna be you know from a rewatch and a new watch perspective um yeah that's all i want to add um if you'd like you can give us a four, four or, or a five, five. Um, mm-hmm. you can just go ahead and leave us a five though, because if you think that we're going to improve, why go and give us the four, you know, yeah, you don't want to waste your time coming back. Five. Just do it now. And, and if you're watching on YouTube, YouTube you, can you can give us a like, yeah. don't give us a thumbs Best down. 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 Instead, leave yeah, a comment probably. telling us how, how we, we can, can improve. improve. See, I even got it down, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I would love when YouTubers <laughs> have like their thing that you know they're going to say and you could be like, yeah, oh, you got it, girl. I got it. I gotta improve on that 4.5 because you guys kind of messed me up with not being able to go 4.5. Well, you so. can get a 4.5 when it's an overall. So if they give but us I, fours and fives, then we could end up with a 4.5. But 4. why 5. not just give us the five? I understand. You know, um, and I think that's pretty much it. Follow us on Instagram. We watch it all. And um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back next week. Did I say that? Oh, wait. Our Andor and Shilk episodes came out on Friday and Beverly Hills on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and same thing every week. Okay, you're you're done. Hit no, down. I just couldn't remember if I said that or not. Not the bone. You're done. She always sounds like I'm saying a curse word. Because you look at me like this. Hit the button. We're done. <laughs> I don't think I said it like that, and I think we can play it back and listen. And I did not say hit the button. We're done. Say it in French. I don't have it yet in French. If you don't come back next week with it in French. You're going to be the button I'm hitting. You're a lot of work. I'm telling you that. Hit the button. Oh, it doesn't work when you do it. How come it Then say work? it. Come, oh. All right. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit okay, the button. we've already done it. Hit. I'm done. Bye. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs>